what is up guys welcome big old black friday hope everybody had a good thanksgiving i hope if you did go out to the stores already that you guys have uh, made it home intact with all your limbs if you're planning on going out later be safe um but yeah i don't know i still have not decided if i'm going out or not you know it, it, it's gotten weird because the last couple of years all of the in-store deals are also online so to me it's almost like pointless to drive into town park try to you know rub shoulders with a thousand people possibly get sick to get some stuff that i could order from my couch but nonetheless i might go out but uh, i figured this was a good time just to kind of bs for a little while uh, i had planned on doing a video yesterday on my favorite holiday horror films didn't have time to get it out i just just way too much going on as far as the uh, holiday prep and everything else so i'm gonna have that video idea kind of shelved for sometime next month so it'll be between thanksgiving and christmas uh and today i just wanted to kind of hang out with you guys for a bit haven't done a q a haven't done an ama in a while i also if you see the pinned comment in the chat i have a uh, a discount for you guys that i'm going to talk about here in just a little bit um uh but we'll, we'll get into all that whenever i get rolling so um yeah hope you guys all had a good thanksgiving we ours was pretty decent it was labor intensive it was the first thanksgiving in a while that we didn't have any family come over so it was just me and my wife and my kids uh so there's a shit ton of leftovers <laughs> which is good and bad you know we, we can eat off of it for a while but also you're just like damn i made so much food and, and nobody ate hardly anything one thing that we did have that was pretty cool was um for our dessert i didn't want to make a bunch of desserts this year since it was just us so i ordered in a dessert from new york called the pie cake I don't know if anybody's heard of it before, but if you've heard of a turducken, it's basically the dessert version of that. So a turducken is where you take a chicken, you stuff it inside of a duck, and you take that and stuff it inside of a turkey, and you cook it all together. And uh, the pie cake is a pecan pie, pumpkin pie, and spice cake that is wrapped in fr frosting like a cake and then has apple pie topping on top. So it was essentially like four desserts in one. And it was fucking awesome. So it was worth the money it took to get it shipped in from New York. But <laughs> enough of all that. Let me uh, let me check in and see everybody that's here. JDev finally made it. I'll be watching live. What's up, man? Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, let's see. You already got some super chat. So I will say this too, guys. If you've never been to one of my Q&As and AMAs, I tend to get a decent amount of super chats. So they, those will take priority just to make sure that they don't pile up because I have had times where <laughs> I stray off from those and then I go back to them and I'm an hour behind on them. So I'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible, but there is no possible way I'm going to get to everybody. So please just be patient. Don't spam your question. And I will answer all the ones that I can, and I will prioritize the ones that are most interesting to me. Hey, Sky. I'm way late, but been going back and watching Mike Flanagan's other series after House of Usher, and I just finished Hill House. How the fuck did I sleep on this for so long? Yeah, Mike Flanagan's shows are really good. I thought that uh, House of Usher was his best one yet, and I just, it sucks I didn't have enough time to do my review. I actually filmed it when I was in Texas um, at Fantastic Fest, but just could not find the time to edit it, so... Unfortunately, I had to miss on that one. Sean Sheridan with two super chats. Two questions. Do you think Spyglass should bring back Sydney for the sake of it or let the franchise rest for a while? Do you worry WB might can the new DCU if Superman Legacy flops at the box office? Uh, so if anybody doesn't know what he's talking about over the last couple of days, it's been blowing up all over social media that Spyglass fired Melissa Barrera, who plays Sam, the lead of the last two Scream films. And then literally the next day, they announced that Jenna Ortega is not going to be coming back for Scream 7, and they said it was for scheduling conflicts with Wednesday. Is that true? Is that PR? We could speculate all day long. I have no idea. You never really feel like you can trust some of these things, but at the same time, I don't like going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. So maybe she had scheduling conflicts, and it's just a weird coincidence of timing. Maybe she would have put forth the effort to figure out scheduling conflicts. And when they, when she found out what happened to Melissa, she said to hell with it. Uh, maybe there's something else going on. I don't know, but nonetheless, they're the two leads of the last two scream films are not signed, uh, are not coming back for the next one. And so it's essentially going to get a creative overhaul. And the first thing that they said, is, Oh yeah, we're thinking about, you know, we're going to bring back Sydney and, and Patrick Dempsey. And it's like, well, yeah, no shit. <laughs> what the fuck else would you do? Um, so should they bring her back for the sake of it? it's a very complicated thing because the only reason that she wasn't in the last one to some degree was because of pay dispute. 
So will they pull a truckload of money up to Nev Campbell's house to get her back? Possibly. Will Nev Campbell respect that and actually come back after they refused to pay her what she thought she deserved in the last one and then canned uh, the lead star of the last two films? I don't know. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Nev Campbell says, no, I don't want to be a part of this. So I really don't know. Uh, if they can't get Sydney back, then they need to let it go for uh, they need to rest for a little while and figure out what the best thing to do. There's no reason to rush it out just to rush it out. But yeah, that's a gigantic mess. Uh, will WB can the new DCU if Superman Legacy flops? I hope not. I don't think that Superman Legacy is going to make a shitload of money, even if it's a magnificent movie. Um, so they need to they need to be ready to not really be a big financial success for at least three movies. They need to allow at least three movies for them to kind of build back up to that. If they are thinking that they're going to come right back with this newly rebooted DCU and immediately make like phase three Marvel numbers, they're fucking idiots. So I really don't know. I really hope that it turns out to be great. I have confidence that it's going to be great. But like I said, even if it's wildly acclaimed across the board, I don't think it's going to make more than like $600 million just because of the the funk that the DCU brand is in right now. So they need to prove themselves. They need to get a couple of movies that wins everybody back, and then you'll start to see the big numbers. Sean, again, do you think Christopher Nolan was overreacting when talking Oppenheimer's Blu-ray and how streaming services steal your movies? I have some digital-owned movies, and none have ever gone away. So what he's referring to is Christopher Nolan not too long ago, I think last week, um, made a statement, and then Guillermo del Toro kind of piled on top of it, where essentially he was trying to promote everybody to go get physical media and stop buying things digitally because the companies will literally, he said, like steal the movies away from you. Now we've all seen streaming services and places where movies have disappeared and been pulled from the catalog. I personally, just like with Sean, have never bought a digital release and then had it ripped away from me, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But then again, I mean, I'm very clearly a big proponent of physical media. So is it a little bit of an exaggeration? It's a little dramatic the way that he phrased it, but he's not completely wrong. He's also wanting you to go buy his movie. So, yeah. All right, guys, really quick. So you're starting to um, pour in a couple of super chats. I don't want to get too far into this before I um, before I lose sight of one of the things I'm here to do. So as I said, whenever I first clicked on, if you see the pinned comment on the live chat, I've got a promo code for Ewin Racing Chairs for you guys today, and it's even better than their Black Friday deals. So Ewin is the brand of computer chairs and uh, gaming chairs that I have been using for well over four years now. Um, I've done, I think, three different videos with them. So this is the fourth time I've kind of collabed with them. And uh, it, it's genuinely like the best chairs that I have used. Uh, I have this one up here. My wife has one downstairs that is a, a more of like a soft ergonomic office kind of uh, chair. So I'm going to talk briefly about both of these. We'll talk about it for like three or four minutes. Uh, I'm going to give you kind of the, an idea of uh, this one, the one that I use, which is the, the higher dollar one, the different features that come with that one. I'll also talk about the one downstairs that my wife has had that we've had for a couple of years. And uh, we'll talk about their sales really quick. So yeah, so the Flash series, the XL gaming chair is the one that I am on, which is one of their, their bigger ones. So that is this one right here. And uh, the luxury leather that the, is covered to the chair is one of the bigger things that I've always loved about Ewin because it's very comfortable leather. It doesn't rip and tear. It doesn't crack. And even though I'm sitting on this thing for a long time, it's not like a really hot, uncomfortable leather either, which is, you know, we've all known those. The diamond stitching that they use in the seat in the back as well allows for a lot of ventilation, allows for a lot of airflow, which is really important when you're sitting in this as long as I am and you'll get like back sweats and things. Uh, they also have the both the lumbar and the neck pillows that are completely adjustable depending on where you want them and what's comfortable for you. And they're also completely removable. So I'm going to show here where, yeah, you turn around the back and it has just those little clips. So you can pull them off if you don't like them or you don't want them there. But uh, I've always had mine in. And the armrests are the what they call 4D adjustable. So they go in every single direction. They go height, length, and um, width adjustable. So right here, you can go up and down. There's a button off the side where you can push it to the left and to the right. And the button there put, moves it 
forward and backward. It also has angular support. So your elbows are always comfortable. I can attest to that. Uh, and this one specifically, the big deal is that it's 30% wider and bigger. So I'm six foot one. This thing supports up to seven foot tall and 500 pounds. And most chairs are just 300 pounds. Uh, right there, you got the angular, the decline and the recline and the multi-tilt and everything. That's all pretty standard stuff, but they're really well built. I've never had any issues using mine continuously for the past two years, this one specifically. Um, so, you know, for somebody that <clears throat> where I'm sitting in this chair for long periods of time, whether I'm doing live streams like this, whether I am editing where most of the time is what I'm spent in this chair, I've never been uncomfortable. I've never had to stop or take breaks because of a comfort uh, or discomfort. And that's been <laughs> the world of difference for me with the amount of work that I've been doing for the past couple of years since going full time, especially. But uh, the, the big ones for me, like the, the elbows, you'd be surprised how much those little like 4D adjustable armrests, how much that helps whenever you are having your elbows down and you're typing and moving mouses all the time, because I've had previous gaming chairs and computer chairs and office chairs. And that's the first thing that I'll get discomfort with is my elbows. And then I'll start trying to put them on my forearms and I'll start leaning. And once you get into that space, you just pretty much have to take a little bit of a break. But um yeah, I've been using this chair for just well over a year now. I've never had a single issue with it, genuinely. And, uh, you know, I try to be as forthright and I try to be have as much integrity as possible when I'm promoting products and materials. I genuinely do not talk about things that I don't personally like. Uh, for every ad, for every sponsorship you guys have seen me take, I have denied 20 or 30 of them because I just don't like their stuff. So this chair, genuinely, for all the ones that I've used, is the best gaming chair I have ever used. Now, this is, like I said, it's like the, the, the higher end one. It's for bigger people, which even larger than me. I am not seven feet tall. I'm not anywhere close to 500 pounds. But that is a, a massive scale of people that can use this chair when traditionally it's below six foot and 300 or less pounds is kind of traditionally what you're going to find. But if you have a computer job, if you work from home, if you are a content creator like me and you need something that's going to be comfortable for you to kind of get as much as you can done and not be miserable doing it, could not recommend this one more. Now, the one downstairs, which I'll talk about really quickly because I don't have as much experience with that one, is the Champion Series ergonomic chair that my wife uses. And this is much more of an office setting type chair. You can see it's covered in cloth instead of leather. Has a little bit more of a, a little bit less of a gaming aesthetic to it. And the big differences with this is that the, the pillow design, aside from the cloth covering, obviously, that's the big one. It's called the ergonomic chair for a reason. And it has the pillow design where they're not strapped in. So it's completely removable and adjustable there, but it's a little bit more office friendly and has a little bit more of a an office aesthetic uh, and not so much of a gaming kind of a futuristic look aside from the wheels those have caster wheels which is uh, a little more futuristic than just the traditional wheels so both of those chairs we have used in this house for you know one year for this one two years for the one i just showed you can't recommend them enough and uh for as far as the sales going on so the ewin website it is black friday today obviously and it's 25 percent off site-wide all across the website however as i have in the pinned comment uh if you use my code cody you can get 30 percent off so just a little bit better so let's see for right here so the flash xl series this is the one i was just showing you this is the chair that i use this is the one that i'm sitting in right now so that is normally the price you can put in my discount code and have even better price than that. And then as far as the champion series, this is the one that I just showed you that my wife uses. And it's actually an upgraded model. You see the pillows are a little bit different. I don't know if that's Velcro or not right there at the top. But uh, yeah, both of these chairs are awesome. So that's pretty much what I've got to say regarding Ewin. But please, you know, Black Friday is today. So go ahead and use that code, snag you on. Honestly, I've, I've had four different models from this company. Every single one of them has been better than the one previous. And I would be surprised if at some point I'm not telling you about an uh, even newer model sometime down the road because I, I genuinely love their stuff. So, all right. Now, with that being said, guys, please. Uh, also, the links 
or in the pinned comment as well and in the video description there is a link to the u.s store as well as the canada store full disclosure yes i do get a commission off of this but it is going to go right back into the channel anything that you guys do that supports me or supports a sponsor that i'm working with it's going to get put back into the channel so I appreciate you guys' time on talking about that. I'm sure I have 47,000 <laughs> different uh, questions that are now waiting. So we'll get back to this. All righty. You scared, bro. How many cold plunges does it take to be as cool as Cody Leach? Just one. Just one. That's the secret. You just dip in, you come out, and... and <laughs> No, I appreciate the joke. Uh, but for those that are interested, though, I did do a video um, where I started doing cold plunges, and I, I've I've still been doing them. I took a break whenever I was ill for about a month or so there, uh, but uh, got back into it, got back into the gym, and, and I absolutely love it. So yeah, can't can't talk about um, cold plunging and how uh, how skeptical I was. I thought it was absolute bullshit, <laughs> and then I started doing it. and I'm like, you know what? Kind of like this. So uh, yeah. Very interesting stuff. Justin, Cody, this is the first for me, but I have a hot take. Okay, we'll see. I feel that Blow is a better Al Pacino Scarface. I couldn't get into Scarface as much thoughts. Um, I mean, it's all a matter of preference. I much prefer Scarface myself. I've only seen Blow once, and I liked it, but it's never really been a movie I've been that compelled to rewatch. I've seen Scarface probably five or six times. So it's all a matter of preference. It's all kind of the same subgenre, you know, crime crime thriller with a charismatic lead and a, a bunch of people getting arrested and killed. So it's good stuff. Hey, Cody, I had a blast playing Jackbox with you last week. Are there any Fox X-Men movies you think are underrated? I think a lot of them are underrated, honestly. Even the ones that we all agree are great. I feel like people kind of discount how important they were to getting us to the state of comic book films that we are in right now. So X-Men, uh, especially X-Men 2, are some of my favorites of all time. I think that Days of Future Past is up there with those two as well. Logan is my favorite of probably all of them. Uh, I really like First Class a lot. I'm, I'm not as high on First Class as a lot of other people. A lot of people, that's the best they've ever done. And there's some issues with that movie that I have, but I do really like First Class. And, you know, despite its very apparent issues, I actually like uh, Apocalypse, too. I thought Apocalypse was pretty good. It was definitely a step down from Days of Future Past, but people just shit all over that one like it was this massive cliff dive. Never understood that. Uh, now, the other ones are pretty rough. <laughs> you know, I, I might be Wolverine. The Wolverine's pretty good, too, despite some some weirdness in the third act. But, yeah, most of that universe I've loved that for a long time. Um, I think there was two years in a row where my number one movie of the year was a Fox X-Men movie. It was Logan and Deadpool back to back. So yeah, I was a bit bummed whenever Disney bought them out and have proceeded to do jack shit with them since. But I was bummed about that because I actually liked having three different studios and universes going. Even though they were Marvel characters, the Fox Marvel world was very different than the MCU world. So very curious what the MCU is going to do with these characters, especially the mutants and uh, and Deadpool. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I, I loved a lot of the, the X-Men movies. Those are still among my favorites of the genre. If it's OK, may I ask about your health scare? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I won't get into too much detail, but yeah, I just um, I, I must have been some kind of an infection or something or some kind of a viral thing that came through. It's I'm not typically somebody who's sick for more than a week. If I'm sick for two weeks, that's a rarity. I was sick for a full month. And so, um, yeah, I went to the hospital. I went to the ER, uh, stayed overnight at one point because my my white cell count was through the roof. And um, I actually almost passed out whenever they were trying to stick the needle in for an IV because she missed the vein and she was like moving the needle around. And I made the mistake of looking at it, which I've never passed out looking at blood or looking at me getting blood drawn. But for whatever reason, I was just so weak at the moment that... <laughs> I about went out and um, I, I had to get a bunch of testing done because they didn't really know specifically what it was. They were just trying to cover all bases. And as of now, all tests have come back normal. There hasn't been anything found. So that's kind of I mean, no news is good news. So, yeah, I've, I've been I've been pretty healthy for the last couple of months. Uh, you know, I still had some lingering effects in, in um, September. You know, when I was in Texas, there was still a little bit of eh, I, don't, I don't feel 100 percent today. But through most of October and pretty much all of November, I've been good. So I appreciate you asking if it was from a 
helpful standpoint and not a nosy standpoint, but regardless, I'm doing pretty good now. Hey, Cody, what are the things that you think are done better in the original RE4 compared to the RE4 remake and vice versa? Both great games and love the channel. I appreciate it. Um, it's hard to say, man, because like the RE4 original, I have so much nostalgia for, and that's my second favorite video game of all time. But genuinely, I feel like the remake bested it in almost every single way. Uh, th now, the, the original is much more campy and a lot sillier. So if you're into that kind of campy B-movie tone, I think that one does significantly better with that. Whereas the remake is a lot darker, a lot more serious while still having elements of that. But it takes itself much more seriously. Uh, as I've grown up, I like the remake's tone a little bit better. I appreciate Resident Evil movie games that go in that direction more than the silliness, but I still love the original. Um, but yeah, the, they're both fantastic games. Like they're both, I would kind of just tether them together as my number two game of all time. But uh, I think that's the major difference is one of them goes for the goofy, campy, silly B-movie stuff. And the other one is much more serious and dark and, uh, and gritty, but they're both phenomenal games. Favorite animal, uh, a wolf. Wolf has always been my favorite animal. And my two dogs, who are basically wolves. <laughs> They're both huskies. Spider-Man 3 game predictions. Uh, okay, well, this is going to kind of be spoilerish. So if you guys have not played Spider-Man 2, the, the PlayStation game, just mute me until this comment goes off screen. But um, th they give you some very clear hints on where things are going to be going. Now, I don't know if it's going to stay just a side story, but you have Carnage. You have Cletus Cassidy, who has now gone off with uh, a symbiote. So Carnage is obviously going to be in there at some point. Um, you still have. I don't know if Venom and um, if Venom and Harry are completely out of the picture or if they'll kick back up at some point because Harry is still alive and presumably there could still be symbiote somewhere i guess but uh if nothing else you still have harry lingering and the you have the scene with uh norman where he tells them to get the 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 serum ready and that's obviously the the goblin serum and so i would assume that harry or not harry uh norman osborne is going to become the green goblin and that's going to be the big baddie of the third game as it should be i don't really want to see them do it to harry I saw a lot of people speculating about that, where the, he's going to use the, the 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 serum on Harry to try to save his life. To me, that wouldn't make any sense because the the whole symbiote thing that we saw in the second game and all the chaos that ensued from that was because he was testing things on his son without really having his ducks in a row. So for me, it's going to make more sense if he that's his intention, but he's going to test that on himself first, and then he becomes the Green Goblin. Uh, will Harry become Hobgoblin or something? I really don't know. But story wise, I think it's very clear it's going to be a Green Goblin storyline. You're going to have um, uh, Doc Ock in there to some degree. You know, he's he's writing his what he said, the final chapter. And uh, so you're going to have Doc Ock and Carnage in the background. And your primary antagonist and storyline is going to be in regards to Green Goblin. Um, now, will we get something like <coughs> the the famous, you know, choose in the the first movie, or is it going to be uh, where he gets Mary Jane and just drops her like in the original comic book when Gwen Stacy falls? Uh, are we going to have a Gwen Stacy introduced in this? I really don't know. But uh, all I can really guarantee is this the, the stuff that they very directly hinted at. And I'm very excited for it. Story wise, these games have been phenomenal so far. All right. Spoilers are over. Spoilers are over. Best and worst theater experience of the year. Um, hmm. That's a good question. Um, best experience is probably something at Fantastic Fest because maybe Saw X because Fantastic Fest is just a really fun crowd to watch movies with. Like it's if you think of the most lively crowd you've ever seen a movie with, that's every screening pretty much at Fantastic Fest, provided it's a good movie. Um, so it would probably be one of those. Uh, I can't think of anything specific beyond that, though. Uh, there wasn't like a, an Avengers Endgame type experience that I had that just stands out this year. Worst theater experience this year. What was the one? Um, it was one of the oh, the Nun two. The Nun two is pretty rough because it brings out all of the teenagers and the teenagers that are there just kind of trying to impress their girlfriend with how douchey they can be. That's the worst fucking crowd to see 
a movie with and they pretty much always come out opening weekend for a horror film so it wasn't among my worst i've ever had it was a it was a pretty light worst experience of the year but a lot of talky ass teenagers that just need to shut the fuck up hey cody happy thanksgiving have you ever seen dead alive aka brain dead i figured it would write up there for you i have not actually for the longest time it was out of print i couldn't find anywhere to actually buy it i've I heard somebody say that now it's in print because i had a question similar to this within the last couple of months and everybody was like what you've never seen it so yeah i've never seen it but i would like to because it does seem like you know the the chips are stacked in my favor that i would enjoy it thoughts on remaking old reviews like friday the 13th i will at some point um if nothing else just for production because it's Here's a tip for you. If you're planning on starting a YouTube channel and you're serious about sticking with it for a while, don't start with your favorite shit because <laughs> my first review series was Nightmare on Elm Street. And while I'm still proud of what I did, I still think there's some good humor and some of the skits and everything that I did. And obviously my thoughts on those films hasn't really changed. Uh, I might be able to articulate them differently now. Uh, but I would want to do something really nice and, and and professional, like similar how, to how I did the Halloween review series where I just went balls out with it with um, Nightmare and Chucky. But uh, yeah, at some point, I don't know about Friday the 13th. Uh, we'll see. Maybe whenever they have a new movie announced, I'll, I'll get the fever and want to go through those movies again. Not likely, but maybe. Uh, but Nightmare for sure. Whenever we get a new Nightmare announced, I'll go back through those movies. And Chucky, I don't know. I, 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 I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a scorned ex-girlfriend relationship with Chucky right now. Like even the first half of Chucky season three, I'm just like, I don't even care anymore. I do, but I don't know. Chucky season two just burned my ass a lot. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm not, I'm not answering Chucky's calls right now, but uh, I'm sorry, but, but to elaborate on what I was saying, yes, uh, I will do that at some point. I wouldn't do it just to continue to talk about the same franchises that gets redundant for me so i will do it at some point just to bring it to my current level of production so within the next couple of years for sure johnny recaps movies you keeping well buddy so far can't complain just hoping for a confirmation my 100 dollars came through okay on your end paypal confirms it but you never even replied message me privately because i honestly dude unless i don't recommend unless i don't recognize your screen name i don't I don't know what we're talking about here. A hundred dollars through PayPal. Um, yeah, sorry. The, message me right now and give me an idea of what we're talking about. I'm sure when I see your email, I'm like, oh yeah, it's them. But yeah, my my brain's on Q and A mode. So um, if you sent me something for for whatever we're doing, I'm, I'll check and make sure it went through. Hey, Cody, long time, first time, just saw OG TCM at our indie theater last night. Thoughts on seeing older films in the big screen worth the money? Sometimes, sometimes they are. Sometimes it's cool to have that experience of seeing them in the big screen. Sometimes it's a movie that doesn't necessarily merit seeing it on the big screen so much. Like I loved seeing Jaws last year. It was the, the 3D re-release, so that made it even cooler, which I'm not really a 3D guy, but that was really cool to see how they they made the movie almost like it was meant to be 3d it was really immersive um but i've seen some older movies like um i saw hocus pocus a little over a month ago with my kids that was fine but that wasn't the movie that i needed to see in the big screen uh earlier this year i saw planes trains and automobiles with my dad which was just a fun nice sunday afternoon to go spend with my dad but that that's again a movie that i didn't need to see on the big screen um but there, there's certain ones you look at like Terminator or, you know, some of these badass classics back to the future that you would just love to have that experience with. So it really depends on the movie. It really depends on the movie. Hey, Cody was curious on how you CP Brian and Sean all started collabing and became friends. Have a great night. Uh, so I'd say maybe five, five or six months, maybe not even that long. Um, well, me and Sean started interacting maybe two or three months after I started YouTube. There was a movie that came out called Blood Father uh, with Mel Gibson, and me and him were like the only people on YouTube who reviewed it. So he found my review and left a comment and asked me to go check out his review, and I went to go check out his review and left a comment, and then we just kind of started talking from there, and you know, the rest is history. 
uh, as far as CP and Brian, it was either five or six months into my channel. And um, I started talking to a mutual friend of all three of us and started collaborating with them. And then eventually was introduced to CP and Brian. And years later, unfortunately, the the, the mutual friend things fell through. But, you know, I've, I've known CP and Brian and talked with them at the earliest state. It was just kind of like a uh, occasional collaboration thing but i started to get really close with them and vice versa and you know now all of us are just best buddies for life have you played texas chainsaw game i have i've streamed it once or twice uh on my video game channel but i played the shit out of it for somebody that doesn't like those types of games like the um the friday the 13th game and evil dead i didn't think was even very good I really liked what they did with Texas Chainsaw, having you be multiple family members instead of just one killer and everybody having their own advantages and their own objectives was really cool. So, you know, I got a little bit burnout on it. I'm not so sure if I'm going to pay $20 to get two new characters that they're advertising for this month, but uh, I, I really dug it for that type of game. I thought it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I would recommend it. And the fact that it was on Game Pass makes it all the better. Hey, Patrick, appreciate it. What is the scariest non-horror movie that you have seen? Uh, let's see here. Sorry, just wanted to check something really quick. Every once in a while, I get paranoid. I always go back over to the live chat, not the star chat, just in case there's a comment like, your audio's off. What is the scariest non-horror movie that you've seen? Wow. Um, the scariest non-horror movie. That's a question I would probably need to prepare and do some searching. I can't think of like, off the top of my head because typically only horror movies are really scary um scariest non-horror movie that's a really good fucking question uh everybody in the chat right now for the next minute or so try and help me answer this question throw out some examples of some movies that are not horror films that you think was scary or terrifying so uh Help me out. We'll discuss it for a minute because I do really like this question, but I'm I'm totally blanking. One hour photo. Somebody says Requiem for a Dream. I've actually never seen Requiem for a Dream. All I've heard is how depressing and miserable it is. So I still have not jumped on it. Seven Blake. That is a horror movie. <laughs> how dare you? Uh, Assault on Precinct 13. Somebody says Passion of the Christ. Nocturnal Animals, Godzilla, Gone Girl. Gone, well, horror, thriller are kind of adjacent. Those are like cousins to me. Uh, Bugs Life, The Bird Still Haunts My Nightmares. I like it. <laughs> Temple of Doom. That's a good, that's a perfect answer. I'm going to go with that one. I don't know if it's technically the scariest, but that is a perfect answer because that movie actually goes dark, dark, but it's just an adventure movie. So there you go. Review boo booze. You are the, uh, the VIP for that one. The mass met Cody. I know you're a big K of Q King of Queens. Okay. I was like, K of Q doesn't Dr. Loomis from Halloween four and five have a lot of Arthur Spooner in him. Wild outbursts, outrageous claims, uh, even more so in Halloween five, Halloween five. He's kind of deranged, <laughs> you know, Loomis is kind of fucked up in five. Uh, but yeah, I could get how you could, you could get that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Forbidden. I love King of Queens. If you haven't gotten on King of Queens, that is the perfect just throw something on for background noise while you're eating dinner type of show. Grape Addict. Hey, Cody, do you plan on doing a Final Destination franchise review? I'd love to see your takes on those movies, the American Pie movies as well. I can all but guarantee you will get both of those in 2024. Uh, Final Destination, we're supposed to have a brand new movie very soon. So if they announce that for 2024, I will be doing a, a review series for sure leading up to it. The only thing that would stop it would be if they announce it for 2025, which at this point, it's like, fuck, guys, you've been talking about it and, and saying it's greenlit and they're working on it for like three years now. Um, whenever they announce for the new one, I'll do a review series in the month or so leading up to it for sure. American Pie, I know they're making a new one and it's going to be female led and it's going to be more appropriate for a new audience. Fuck off with all of that. I'm sure I'm going to hate that new one because it just everything they use to advertise the direction they're going is so anti-American pie. But nonetheless, I love the American pie movies. So I, I actually really want to do a review series on those. I've wanted to do it for a while. And um, let's just say I, I'll drop this hint here. And it's not for sure. And we haven't fully cooked the idea yet. But 
One of the ideas that we're tossing around for 31 on 31 next year is a comedy based episode because we have never done one of those. And if that is the case, I would love to get American Pie in there somewhere. So, uh, yeah, the stars will hopefully align for both of those. Hey, Cody, huge fan. Would you ever review a series on Smallville? Such a great adaptation of the Superman character as well as Lex Luthor, pure gold. Um, I won't say that I'll never watch it. I've only seen like one or two episodes of the show. I've always heard pretty good things about it. Um, but would I ever do a review series? No, um, I, that's not content that ever really tends to perform overly well on this channel is superhero TV shows. And beyond that, Smallville has been over for what, well over a, a decade or so. Or so so I, I don't think there's a really a market for that. I'm sure there's a very specific niche amount of people that follow me that would love to see that. But for the amount of time it would take to watch all the seasons and review all the seasons, it just wouldn't be worth it for me. So review series, definitely not. But at some point, I'm, I might check it out if I get some time on my hands sometime between now and 2035. Patrick, are you looking forward to the Zach Eggers next pro Zach Kreger's next project? Oh, okay. I was thinking Robert Eggers. Barbarian was easily one of the best horror movies in a good while. I loved Barbarian. And so, yes, immediately, whenever that guy announces what he's doing next, I will be there day one. So I, I absolutely loved Barbarian. I know some people didn't. It's one of those movies that you either like loved or hated, apparently, but I fucking loved it. More terrifying, the Emperor or Voldemort? Uh, I would say the Emperor. I never really got that intimidated from Voldemort. I thought he looked pretty silly once he finally kind of came back in full form. Thoughts on Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's always been one of my favorites. That's uh, that movie is the 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 only movie of Arnold that you could say is was entirely ahead of its time. Uh, you know, he he had some really great movies back in the day, but um, Last Action Hero was one that the world just was not ready for. And uh, I've always loved it. I think it's got a really good, sharp sense of humor. I think he's a lot of fun in it. I think the action's really fun. I think that it does a lot of things that we appreciate much more nowadays with parody and satire. And, you know, it, it takes all these action movie tropes and makes a joke out of it. I think the movie's fucking awesome. So that that to me is the one that uh, it's the most undeserved flop of his career. And it was the one movie that he made that was just absolutely ahead of its time. And audiences just weren't ready to know what to do with it. Do you or are you going to see Godzilla minus one? Usually I'm not into the Japanese Godzilla movies, but this movie looks to me like something I should not miss. Um, I don't have any interest personally, whether or not I'm going to see it. I'm really not sure. We're kind of in that section of the year where a lot of movies coming out I just have no interest in, but I still want to try to see everything. Um, Godzilla is, and kaiju movies are really not my thing. I just don't care for them very much. Even the new ones that everybody seems to really like, they just don't do much for me. Uh, you throw subtitles onto it, that's not going to help its case with me. So yeah, it's I don't have any interest in it. But if I see it, you'll you'll hear my thoughts one way or the other. Special effects wise, the movie looks like it's going to be pretty damn good, but I just don't care for kaiju movies. That's this is not my thing. Which film is better, The Lion King or Frozen? Lion King by a fucking landslide. I mean, granted, I, that's nostalgia for me. I grew up when The Lion King came out and was this big splash. Frozen is very good, uh, but it ain't touching The Lion King. Are you a big enough fan of Godzilla and King Kong to do a ranking of their movies? <laughs> see my answer from two questions ago <laughs> uh no the only i've really only followed these newer sections of movies ever since the was it gareth edwards godzilla so i've seen gareth i've seen godzilla godzilla king of monsters and godzilla versus kong but uh and i've seen the the remake from the 90s with matthew broderick but i've never seen any other godzilla movie beyond that nor do i ever have the interest to um same uh, king kong i've seen I've seen once the one with Charles Grodin. Uh, so I assume that's from like maybe the 70s. Uh, and the one with uh, Peter Jackson did once. But yeah, like I said, those those types of movies, the big giant monster movies, just not my thing. Hey, Cody, how's everything? What are your hopes for the Resident Evil franchise in the future? Resident Evil 9, Code Veronica X remake, OG remake again, Code Veronica remake for me, though. Um my hope, I mean, obviously, I want a Resident Evil 9. But uh, I don't know what direction they would go with that, because I thought the direction that they were going ended up being the DLC for Resident Evil Village, which was the, the chapter on uh, his daughter. 
Um, so yeah, I want to see eventually. I want to see a Resident Evil game with all of the older main cast back together again. Like you have Chris, who's much older now. I want to see like an older Leon and Claire. I want to see them come back together for one massive, like final canon game. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, as far as the remakes, I I think if you look at what they've done so far, they remade two, then they remade three, then they remade four. And that very much is like the the Leon storyline. Like three is just tethered to two because it's exactly the same night. It doesn't have anything to do with Leon. But the, the trilogy that they told there was kind of one isolated storyline somewhat. I want them to go back and remake the original and then remake Code Veronica and then remake Resident Evil 5. I think most likely, especially with uh, all of the the cutscene that we got with Wesker, uh, and even in the the DLC, the separate ways that they're probably just going to jump right into Resident Evil Five. But I think that'd be stupid because anybody that's in this newer generation that is just following along with these games and their new iterations, they've only played two, three, and four. And we don't know who Chris is. We don't know who Jill is. We don't know who Wesker is beyond the one cut scene in Resident Evil 4. And so I think that would be stupid to jump right into 5 because anybody who didn't grow up with the original games is going to go, what the fuck is going on here? Who are all these new people? And they're not new at all when you get to 5. And there's actually a lot of story payoff in 5 that closes off storylines with Chris and Jill and Wesker that would have no impact because we're being introduced to them in their final chapters. So yeah, I, I hope they're not going to do that. So for me, uh, they should go back and remake the original, then code Veronica and then five. What are some Scorsese movies that you love? Uh, your thoughts on James Gandolfini and the Sopranos. Uh, so Scorsese movies that I love Goodfellas. Um, the Departed, Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Taxi Driver, I wouldn't say I love, but it's very good. Uh, it's not a movie that I would rewatch very often. King of Comedy, same thing, very good. Not a movie I would rewatch very often. Um, what else? Casino, I've never been as big on Casino as I am with Goodfellas. Uh, so I again, Casino is in that category of very good, but I don't really watch. I'm kind of blanking on some of the others. Um, fuck. Killers of Flower Moon is very good um shutter island is very good my top three though are the ones that i gave you first goodfellas and um the departed and wolf of wall street uh, i'm sure there's one or two that i might be forgetting but uh thoughts on james gandolfini and the sopranos he was awesome you know the sopranos was a good show uh, i wasn't as high on it as most people but i still really enjoyed it enough to um to stick with it obviously but uh yeah james gandolfini was was incredible there's a there's a reason why that it's one of the most celebrated TV characters of all time. Sean Payton. Hey, Cody, just got back from the Battle of Best Buy. Ooh, man. Got the Loki and School of Rock steelbook along with Oppenheimer and Alita Battle Angel on 4K. Haven't seen either of them, but your recommendations gave me hope. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I would say to watch Oppenheimer first and then watch Alita Battle Angel. Alita Battle Angel. Alita. I still can't say it. Alita Battle Angel second because then you'll be perked back up. Um, but yeah, they're both very good movies. Uh, I'm still debating whether or not I want to go into town and, and shuffle through the crowds or not. I've already spent a shitload of money online. I've already bought a lot of the big Christmas gifts. And uh, really, I would just want to look at Blu-ray deals and stuff. But the problem I run into is I have so many that... No less than six times I have went to a store, gotten excited about something, bought it, came home and realized that I already have it. And I'm like, fuck, how did I forget that I bought this? So that's a, I guess it's a good problem to have. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I'm nervous about. I need to keep like a fucking log, like a some kind of a, a, a pie chart or a graph or something that shows me what movies I have. Sean, again, love this year's debrief. I mean, that was a long one, wasn't it? Have you or plan to see It's a Wonderful Knife? It's a movie in the vein of Happy Death Day and Totally Killer. I enjoyed it. Would love to hear your thoughts if you've seen it. Uh, I wanted to see it, but it wasn't released anywhere near me. Uh, it's coming to Shutter on December 1st, so I will for sure see it. Depending on how I like it, I might do a standalone review for it, or you might just hear about it in my month wrap-up video. But uh, yeah, it wasn't playing anywhere near me, and the only person whose thoughts I got was uh, Sean and he didn't seem to be all that high on it and me and his taste lines up pretty well on most things 
So uh, I didn't go out of my way. I wasn't going to drive two hours to see a movie that somebody I trust said was just okay. Still embarrassed by my last. Oh, the comment. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, so when we were doing the debrief, Brooke gave me a super chat and was asking where the collector was on my horror icon tier list. And I was like, I'm pretty positive I had him on there, but uh, it's okay. I, trust me, there's times I forget what the hell I said. Uh, still embarrassed by my last. What did you take away as the meaning of Evil Lurks? Uh, where Evil Lurks? I watched it last weekend. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, I don't know. If, like, like It's not really a deeper meaning necessarily that I got out of it. To me, it was just like a, a really unique take on demonic possession. And they wove in argentina culture and, and, and latin culture in there to where the the lore was very unique uh so i would need to watch it again to kind of grasp any deeper meaning or anything that's kind of boiling under the surface for me it was just really unique and and i'm i watch so many movies nowadays that unique is what gets my attention because as you guys will see whenever i do my ranking of all the movies i saw in 2023 at some point next month or beginning of january the vast overwhelming majority of movies that I've saw over the last year are all going to fit right into that like mediocre middle of two and a half to 3.25 stars. So uh, unique is good when most of the year is that. If you remade Halloween, who would you cast as Loomis? I'd pick John Travolta as crazy as that sounds. I'm curious to know who you'd pick, though. Is that just because he's got a bald head now? Um, that'd be wild. That'd be interesting. I'd pay to see that. Uh, who would I cast? I don't know, man. Maybe Brian Cranston. I don't fucking, that's just a name I'm throwing out. I, I really have no idea. I really don't know. I, I would like to see a Brian Cranston one. I guess I could, I could see that a little Heisenberg in there. I am the one who takes out Michael. Hey, have you seen Kurosawa films? Best director of all time, in my opinion. I have not. I've not seen any of his movies. Uh, I know that's a Seven Samurai guy. Um, foreign films, I'm still fairly new to. Uh, for a long time, I refused to watch them because I hated watching movies with subtitles. Uh, I've gotten over that uh, since I've watched numerous foreign films, but I'm still very, very behind the curve. Um, and as far as martial arts films and films based off of martial arts, that's another subgenre that's never really been my thing. So, um, you know, as much as Uncle Sean has, has tried to indoctrinate me here and there when we go to Fantastic Fest and check out some of his martial arts picks, um, it's still not exactly uh, a, a genre of films that draws me in very much. So it, it might be a while before I start experiencing some Kurosawa. I did a tier list ranking all the Friday Nightmare Scream, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw and Chucky films. How would you rank them as overall franchises? Huh, <sighs> okay. Well, this is where it gets tough because are you going to try to be objective about which ones are technically better franchises? Do you start to give points for which ones are your favorites? Because if I was ranking them by my favorite, it would be very different than I would say ranking them as overall franchises. Uh, as overall franchises, all biases and favorites aside, with that list that you just gave me, I would put Texas Chainsaw at the bottom. I would put Friday right above that. Um... Then it gets hard. Honestly, uh, I would put Nightmare next because half of those movies aren't very good as much as I love them. Chucky right above that. Then Halloween and then Scream. Uh, if we're going just off of like quality consistency, I think that is kind of where my thoughts lie. Now, obviously, Nightmare and Chucky are my favorite by a landslide of those that you just gave me. Um, but if we're just talking about ranking them as franchises, like Texas Chainsaw is a fucking mess, absolute mess. There's some gems, but as a franchise, it's pretty bad. Uh, Friday quality wise consistently across the board is pretty low, but at least it knows what it is. Like Friday is not really aiming high. Uh, so I think for what Friday is trying to do, that's a fairly consistent franchise. Uh, nightmare, like one and three is the shit new nightmare is, is really good. I have a lot of fun with two and four, five and six can kiss my ass. The remake I'll never watch again. Uh, so you've got two amazing, one really good, two fun, but extremely flawed one, three that are horrible. Um, so you have Chucky before. 
for a long time, I would have said Chucky and Scream are the most quality, consistent franchises. Chucky has since gone like this. Um, but overall, there's a lot more hits than misses in that franchise. And then Halloween, despite the choose your own adventure style of it, most of those movies are pretty good. Uh, Scream hasn't had a bad movie yet. So that's how I would answer that. Uh, started my own horror podcast, doing a Nightmare on Elm Street review series, Dream Warriors, up next, and thought of you. Well, I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm synonymous with the most awesome Nightmare on Elm Street movie. <laughs> Good luck on the podcast. I'm sure it's fun. Out of all of the slasher films that only ever received one movie, which do you think could have benefited from a redesign of the main slasher villain, uh, The Burning? I think that uh, the fact that... <sighs> Who is it? Um cropsy i think that cropsy being so forgettable um oh thank you dice <laughs> dice just sent me the app that i was asking for and just kind of in passing um what the fuck is it talking about cropsy i think cropsy and the how unmemorable cropsy is the only reason that the burning wasn't like a franchise because the burning has some awesome kills by tom savini it's got that camp ground slasher feel that friday the 13th and sleepaway camp and a few others have uh cropsy being lame and forgettable is really the only thing that sets it apart from some of the more successful movies that turn into franchises so i would say the burning and i would love to see a remake of that at some point what is your most look forward horror movie in 2024 uh as of right now it's maxine maxine is the the chapter three of the x trilogy uh right now that one's top for me for sure Do you think a movie on the Titanic submersible disaster should wait a while before being released? And would you ever watch it if it gets made? What the fuck is it going to be about? Rich people doing dumb shit with money? I mean, I don't. <sighs> should it wait? Maybe out of respect, since it's not even been a year, maybe four years trying to profit off of it. May wait a little bit, but I just don't know what what story is there to be told. It's not like I mean, people died. There's obviously always tragedy with that it's not like they deserve to die i i would prefer they didn't die but what is the story what is the lesson to be learned here don't do stupid shit with your money like it's just i don't know i don't know what the fuck you would make a movie about that for you're on death row last meal oh lord well i don't I, i've seen some pretty extravagant last meals so apparently you could pretty much ask for whatever the fuck you want and they'll get it um for me i would want I would want um, my favorite food is a spicy chicken sandwich, like a fried chicken, spicy chicken sandwich. So I would want the best version of that. Uh, I would want a root beer float. That's my favorite dessert. Um, I would probably want a Coke on ice on the side to drink with my meal because I don't like having like shakes and, and ice cream desserts as the only beverage that I have. To me, it doesn't like wash the food down. Uh, I would want a disgustingly delicious double cheeseburger uh i would want some carne asada tacos with no onion fuck onions um what else a bowl of obviously i'm not going to eat all of this but it's my last meal who gives a fuck about waste uh a bowl of ham potato and cheese soup the way that my grandma used to make it which in turn is the way that i make it that's like the ultimate winter comfort food a chili dog with mustard proper chili by the way not fucking like chili you eat in a bowl on top of a hot dog hot dog chili is something else and if you were raised in the midwest you would know better and i'm sure like i would eat all of that and still be like no i forgot this uh what the hell else i guess that would be it right now i'm just trying to name off like all my favorite foods but yeah i don't know <laughs> hopefully i never have to actually make that decision advice i'm 24 feel like i'm treading water in life any tips move new hobby change jobs you're 24 dude everybody is treading water when they're 24 until i met my wife and even a little bit after i met her i felt like i was treading water and i was 24 when i met her um like you're, you're still so young like I, I we have this really weird expectation i don't know if it's an american thing or just uh just in general worldwide but 
we tend to put this pressure on ourselves like we're supposed to have shit figured out and we're supposed to be on this definite path immediately after high school to where by the time we're 30 everything's set up and perfect and you know we're just riding it from that on dude there, there's people that don't figure out what they're doing with their lives until they're in their 30s like if we're going to consider youtube me figuring my shit out i didn't go full time until two years ago when i was 31 so i mean i i've had multiple jobs in many different industries i've had multiple places of residence uh and so you you really just don't need to have that much pressure on yourself like if you if you're not happy with your life then there's a lot of easy things you can do just figure out what is not happy about it what is not making you happy about it and change that whether it's a job or the setting or having more hobbies or you know hanging out with friends more whatever it is but if it's just the feeling of i feel like i should be more advanced in 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 life right now you shouldn't it's whatever you got all the time in the world i mean none of us are guaranteed tomorrow of course but theoretically provided a, a tragic incident we you have all the time in the world to figure that out so my advice would be just figure out what would make you happier or what in your life right now is making you unhappy like when i had my job previous to going full time that was what was making me unhappy the the stress and the constant just grind of that place and never feeling like i was getting anywhere never feeling like i was appreciated never feeling like anything i did ever mattered uh that was something i absolutely had to cut out like a cancer so figure out what that is if you have one and change that but as as far as being 24 dude you're you're still young just just enjoy life you know obviously make good decisions but yeah you don't you don't need to be in like a a solid position or having a, a career that's going to be the rest of your life or finding a house or anything just just enjoy it thoughts on the scream franchise situation uh i talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the stream um but i'll just say it you know where there's smoke there's fire i really don't know what caused this to blow up the way that it did uh hollywood is very weird in regards to what things they tolerate and what things they condemn there are people that have done significantly worse things than posting tweets asking for ceasefire and a stop of genocide that still have careers in Hollywood. You know, uh, there are still people there. There are people that do like the smallest of things and have their career torn away from them to be like made an example of like that. That's one of the reasons why, like, I firmly believe you have to. The artists that are out there, whether it's directors and actors and studios or whatever, if you're going to enjoy the the art that they create, you have to separate the person from the art. Because if I was to have in-depth conversations with most of my favorite actors and directors and writers, or whatever, I'm sure the vast majority of them, I would not really care for that much as people. Uh, and so it, like there's I had a question uh, earlier asking if I was going to start boycotting Spyglass. No. Because I still, I mean, I, I I support Melissa Barrera. I think that she was done wrong, and I'll support her in any way that I can, as far as like promoting or rooting on whatever she does in the future. But I'm not gonna stop watching movies because of it. Uh, so that's the thing where just more than anything, things like that and, and significantly bigger examples is why I roll my eyes at people that look at Hollywood like they're some kind of a moral compass, and I I, I look really harshly at some of the loudest people from Hollywood that like to think that they're on some kind of a pedestal above the rest of us and tell us how the rest of us should think and act and behave and how we should vote and everything else. It's like you guys are the most corrupt eat fucking eat each other world in the world in, in the entire country. So save your bullshit. Um, but getting off on tangents thoughts on the scream franchise. They don't have their two leads. I have no idea where the hell they're going to go with the seventh film. Uh, it, it's, it seems obvious and yet very predictable and not in an appealing way that they would go back to Sydney. Uh, if that was the obvious direction to go, then what the fuck was the problem with the last movie? So I really don't know. You know, I was very excited when they announced Christopher Landon was the director. I think that a new creative voice in there would be nice. And I think that his style would would suit a scream movie well, as long as he didn't go too comedic with it. And now that all this has happened, I kind of just have no interest in what's going on. So I'm sure I'll still watch it if we have one a year from now. But um, I really don't know what the fuck to make of it. It's just a gigantic mess.
Uh, let's see here. What do you think of Paul Thomas Anderson? There will be blood, punch, drunk, love, boogie nights, hopefully a ranking one day. Um, he's one of those directors that uh, they're not completely my cup of tea. I think boogie nights is really good. Uh, I still have not seen There Will Be Blood, actually. I, that's been on my like list for a while. Punch Drunk Love is strange. There's aspects to it that I really like, but it's a very weird movie. Like him getting into a fight with um, with Philip Seymour Hoffman. I love that side of the movie. The obsession with the pudding coupons and everything else that's going on. Like, that's just a very odd movie. And Paul Thomas Anderson, his style tends to be odd for me. So uh, a ranking one day. Probably not, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's just one of those one of those guys. <laughs> Go ask Brian. That's that's a Brian question. Let's pretend Pet Cemetery 2019 ended. Gage jumping out of the car with a Tommy gun, pumping his family with lead. I'm sorry, I just hated that movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's professionally made, but to me, it just no. You you, you kind of miss the point and fuck that marketing team. Grape Addict, would you ever do a favorite childhood movies ranking? Actually, I plan to. That's an idea that I have kind of written on the board um, for, for next year, hopefully, but I would love to do that. I'd be interested in seeing where a goofy movie would be since I know you love that movie. It would probably be number one, <laughs> if not top three. I mean, I'd be shocked if it was not top three. Uh, but yeah, I would love to do that at some point. Uh, it's not necessarily the adult theme stuff that I tend to do, but I would love to at some point go and, and, and talk about movies that I loved as a kid, because as we all know, sometimes you outgrow things. So movies that we loved as a kid and the reasons why we loved them as a kid doesn't always transfer into adulthood. Sometimes we watch some of those old movies and we're like, Oh, I can't get through it. Sometimes we don't uh, like the Disney channel original movies. I still enjoy the fuck out of those. I'll still throw those on randomly throughout the day. Should I put, um, luck of the Irish on yesterday while I was cooking dinner just because I just wanted something on in the background that was easily digestible. But uh, yes, I would love to do that. It's a really good idea that I've, I've had in my head for a while. Sean returns a comedy 31. You Rudy uh, CP and Sean would be in agreement. Brian would be opposite end of the world excited for kingdom of the planet of the apes movies. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I've brought it up to Brian yet because I was I was so focused on trying to get him sold on next year's horror one for Halloween. Uh, but yes, Brian's taste in comedy, he would self-admit this, is very different. Um, you know, when you look at Brian's top 50 comedy video that me and him collaborated on, his list of movies could not be more different than mine. Uh, so yes, uh, you, you are very much on the right track with that. Am I excited for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Absolutely. I, I loved it. Uh, the trailer that we got, I loved it. And that trilogy is incredible. So as long as... Uh, as long as we don't dip in the writing and uh, they're not just trying to sell us on the CGI and, and continue in that world, I'm so excited for that movie. That's that's easily like top three most anticipated for next year. Wolf Lust. Hey, Cody, hope you and your family had a nice holiday. Recently, it's come to my attention that Nosferatu is getting a reboot with Bill Skarsgård cast as Count Orlock. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I can't wait for it. Uh, Robert Eggers is an interesting filmmaker. Um, you know, I, I don't love the witch, but I really do appreciate the witch, uh, the lighthouse. Absolutely not for me. That was one of my, my bottom of that year. Uh, but then I thought that the North one was pretty badass. So I'm really intrigued to see what that guy does next. His style bringing Nosferatu back is just like a match made in hell for me. I can't wait for that. Bill Skarsgård being cast is perfect. Uh, I saw a still today where it showed Nicholas Holt in the background as like the the human character, I guess. So, um, yeah, that's another top anticipated movie for next year. Oh, Reliable Dale. Hope you're doing great, Cody. Love your stuff as always and keep being awesome. I appreciate that super chat, too. That's a that's a big fat super chat. Uh, but yes, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, the holidays are here. A little bit exhausting with that. But uh, nonetheless, Thanksgiving's out of the way. Christmas, I've gotten the vast majority of my shopping done already. I tend to do pretty much all my Christmas shopping the week of Black Friday, now that all the deals were online, and I've spent an ass load of money. But nonetheless, um, yes, that's out of the way. I'm hoping to just have a nice, relaxing, fun December, get some good end-of-the-year content out, start the year fresh next year. So, yes, I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well as, uh, as well. 
Demon Shire, keeping with Resident Evil, it struck me that none of the main protagonists are dead. Eight games in, plus Revelations 1 and 2. Are Capcom too safe? I sure think so. Someone should have died by now. Um, I never really noticed that either, and I think that is an, a testament to the fact that they don't need to kill anybody. If none of us were bitching before now, uh, kind of like the way most of us were at Scream 6, where we're like, this is fucking ridiculous, they're all still alive, uh, I, I don't think it's actually an issue. You know, they're... Not to say, if they did my idea for Resident Evil 9, where they're bringing all the characters back, I think it would be meaningful to kill one of them off. Uh, but, uh, yeah. The fact that I never realized that until you said it, I think, makes it uh, is a testament that they probably don't don't need to. But that is interesting for the amount of crazy shit they've been involved with. <coughs> Let me get a drink. Nice little Halloween Horror Nights themed tumbler here. I have a t-shirt that I bought with this same exact design on it, but the fucker shrunk like a full size and a half with one wash. So thanks, Universal. G. Killman. Hey, Cody, have you seen Tucker and Dale versus Evil? It's one of my favorite horror comedies to watch with friends. I've seen it twice. It's very funny. It's very funny. For those that haven't seen it, it's uh, kind of playing on the tropes of like the backwoods hillbilly murderers, but the backwoods hillbilly characters are actually good guys. And um, essentially what keeps happening is these like really unfortunate, gory accidents. And from the perspective of everybody seeing it, it looks like they're murdering people, but they're actually like trying to save people. It's hard to explain without watching a clip of it, but it's very fucking funny. So for example, there is somebody that trips and falls into a wood chipper. And one of the characters, one of the hillbilly characters is grabbing his legs and just trying to pull him out. But when somebody sees him across the way, it looks like he's shoving him in. So it's very funny. If you guys like horror comedies, check it out. I've heard you say you grew up on Disney Channel. Hey, there you go. You must, my, my ears or one of our ears must have been burning because the, the thought was already in my head to talk about Disney Channel a few minutes earlier. What era specifically is the era of that so Raven, Kim Possible, Lizzie McGuire, Proud Family after your time? No, nope, that was still in my time. Uh, the Disney Channel era for me was even Stevens, Kim, uh, not Kim Possible so much, but uh, Lizzie McGuire, that so Raven. I did watch a good amount of Proud, Proud Fam. When you talk for an hour straight, you forget words. Proud Family. Um, Boy Meets World was in heavy rotation at the time. The reruns. Uh, what else? And then the Disney Channel movies, pretty much. But yeah, right. I think that, That's So Raven was like the last new show that I was into. I watched the first season or so of that. And then I kind of started to get out of it. Everything after that So Raven is after my time. Favorite comic book and horror movie of the year so far, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Totally Killer for me. I haven't seen much horror, but slowly getting into it. I remember our conversation regarding my bottom of child's play, which is Curse. Um, well, I'm not looking at a list right now, so unless I'm forgetting one, which is entirely possible, I would say my favorite horror movie of the year so far is probably Talk to Me. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. There, there's a lot of there, there's a good three or four movies that are kind of sitting right next to each other this year. There's not like a clear like an X or a barbarian so far this year. But talk to me is probably the one that I'm going to walk away this year remembering the most. Uh, as far as comic book films, it's either Guardians or I actually really like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. It's probably Guardians 3. I think that's probably the safest bet, unless I'm forgetting one. Any hope for Insomniac giving us a Punisher game? I love the Punisher in Daredevil Season 2 and Spider-Man 1994. Would love to see what they would do. Uh, that would be cool. I, I want to see what they do with Wolverine first. Because Wolverine, I would assume, would be a much more mature game. But I think they said it's also going to be the same universe as Spider-Man, which is a very hard PG-13 uh, so a Punisher game would need to be mature rated. I would want that to be like a gore fest, kind of like the one that we got back when the Thomas Jane movie came out. But um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see Insomniac do a bunch of Marvel properties. They've done phenomenal with Spider-Man so far, so give it all to them as far as I'm concerned. But I want to see what they do with Wolverine. 
Got nine super chats left, guys. Catching up. And then I'll go to some of the regular questions as, as some more pour in. Justin Ganong, quick thoughts on Tool. Do you call them metal? Uh, I have not listened to enough Tool to say whether or not I would consider them metal or not. I'm not really a gatekeeper when it comes to music. I would give you my opinion on what whether I think it's metal, but I'm not the type to be like, that's not metal. Unless it's just something stupid, like people that call ACDC metal. Then it's like, stop. Uh, but I don't know. Tool, they're, they're a little out there for me. There's a couple songs by them that I like, but for the most part, they're not necessarily my cup of tea. So I, to be fair, I have not listened to enough of them to judge them fairly, but what I have heard has not enticed me to listen more. Not really my type of band. Hey, Jesse. Cody, you're my favorite reviewer. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're just, just wondering if your wife and kids ever want to be involved in your channel or be in videos. Um, my youngest daughter would prefer that she's in every single one of my videos. She asks me all the time if we, she loves when we go to see a movie together and I do the little out of theater reaction. She, that's her favorite part. Uh, my wife, not so much. She kind of enjoyed the podcast, but not, not so much, which is part of the reason why we we've kind of fallen off of it. Uh, I'd like to get that back going again, but she wasn't nearly as, as enthusiastic about it as I was. Um, but my biggest hang up is that I, I like to keep them off of the channel for all of the ugliness that comes with it. The majority is good. Uh, I don't ever want to make it seem like the, the negative assholes are the focus because they're not. They're the loud minority. But, you know, the people are just pieces of shit. So you, th you throw your kids, you throw your wife on there. There's always going to be somebody that says something about them. They're going to call them fucking ugly or, you know, fat or whatever. They're, anything they can do to just to be mean. And I don't want to read that about them. I read stuff like that enough about me and I've built up enough of a skin to where it doesn't really affect me all that much. But reading things like that about them would set me off and would really like just fuck me up mentally. So I just don't really want to deal with that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's the reality of it. So, um, yeah, sometimes when it's appropriate, when we do little out of theater reactions or things like that, um, I like to have them on. But for the most part, I kind of like to to shield them from the, the negative side of all this. Tied with Totally Killer would be Scream 6. Okay. I enjoyed Totally Killer more than Scream 6. Scream 6 was the first three quarters of it. I was like, this is easily the best Scream sequel. And then the last 15 minutes kind of took it way down for me. Who do you think we can't... <laughs> Why do you think we can't get a good and accurate Resident Evil film? Um, well, we almost did with Welcome to Raccoon City. The problem that the, the mistake they made with that movie was trying to do two games at once. And so both game stories were competing with each other. Um, but they were on the right track. Why can't we get a good and accurate Resident Evil film? I think it's because they lend themselves more to short like a mini series uh i, I would love in a perfect world i would love netflix or, or hbo or somebody to do what they did with last of us and do resident evil season one and have it be like a five or six episode series and then the next season would be raccoon city the next season would you know i think it lends itself better to that um it's just the the problem that they have with all video game movies is that they either make it very fan focused like they did with welcome to raccoon city and a lot of the non fans are alienated uh, same with five nights at freddy's a lot of the non fans are alienated because they don't really understand the significance of all these cool things that are happening but if they go the other direction and they make it very wide appeal then they lose the fans because it's just so watered down and generic that it just doesn't really have much impact with them so that's the difficulty last of us did it perfectly so last of us needs to be the template of how to do it going forward, whether it's a TV series or a movie. Joshua Nelson, I've never understood people who say that Friday the 13th is a lower quality series compared to other slashers. Yes, there are some bad to awful entries, but some really good to great ones as well. It's all a matter of taste, but as far as my, my money is concerned, I think that that one is definitely one of the lower quality ones because the, the movies themselves are just, they're, they're low hanging fruit. Now, they have a better track record than some other ones like Wrong Turn and Texas Chainsaw and Children of the Corn. But, um, you know, Friday the 13th for me, I love Final Chapter. Hey. I love Final Chapter. I love the remake. 
Um, I really like part six. I really like Jason X. Um, I have fun with Jason Goes to Hell, despite it really not being a Friday the 13th movie at all. Uh, Friday the 13th part two and three have some good stuff in them, but I don't really, those are okay to me. The rest of them are all pretty terrible. I think the original is garbage. I think that part five, despite being like, if, if I'm in the mood for five, five can be entertaining, but five is very schlocky. Uh, part seven and eight are both fucking terrible. The, um, am I forgetting another one? Probably not. But even the ones that are good, it's just a very basic, low budget slasher. There's not really much there aside from a cool looking killer and some good practical effects and kills. You know, story wise, character wise, there's just nothing in those movies uh, for the most part. You know, you have like a Tommy Jarvis in a couple of them, but beyond that you know you look at some of the other ones like nightmare and halloween there's just a lot more going on there's a they're, they're reaching for a lot more they're more ambitious sometimes they're worse than you know the some of the lower friday the 13th movies but just for what i go to movies for friday the 13th is very is very basic so when i'm in the mood for it it's great but it's it's never been one of my favorites <sighs> 4.99 from adh dalton and then he follows that up with any advice for someone wanting to start doing movie series reviews? Just do them. You learn by doing, or at least I learn by doing. You know, I don't have an education in this. Um, I've educated myself since starting it, but it wasn't like I went to school for journalism or film criticism or anything. So just know your taste. Try to figure out ways to articulate your thoughts that aren't just like, this is cool, this was rad, this is awesome, this was lame. Um, and... Try to figure out if you're doing videos specifically, try to figure out what's going to make you stand out. Because when I started, it was a flooded market. Since then, it's even worse. Um, but yeah, just start it. Just do it for fun. You'll figure it out along the way and it'll either just be a hobby or it might go into something bigger. Felix, Home Alone videos for December, reviews, ranking, etc. Um, maybe, maybe. I don't, I don't, hate the idea but um i don't know if i'll have time for a random review series or anything and home alone let's be honest we only really want to talk about the first two planning on seeing creed live for their reunion tour i sure as hell am what are your top five creed songs i bought two vip tickets to the show in south carolina so yes me and my wife will be seeing them next year uh can't wait I was very excited when they announced that they were going to be doing a tour beyond those um, cruises. I've always been a massive Creed fan. Uh, what are my top five songs? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you got to put higher on there. You got to put um, uh, my sacrifice on there. One last breath. Uh, Bullets would be in my top five. I think it's the heaviest song that they've ever done. Um, and probably what if. You know, not like a terribly <laughs> original list, but that would probably be my top five. All right, a couple more. You and a group are robbing the Bank of America. Good Lord. Uh, number one, who would be the smart of the group? Hans Gruber, Dr. Evil, Waluigi, Dr. Loomis, pick one. Well, I'm going to go with Hans Gruber <laughs> because barring that we don't you know, have a, a John McClane in our midst, he had a pretty awesome plan and would have gotten away with it. Besides movies and movie memorabilia, is there anything you like to collect? Um, not necessarily. That's really about it. Uh, for a while, I collected Funko Pops. I grew out of that pretty quickly, especially with how much space they took up. Um, yeah, just movies. You know, I, I don't even like to collect music that much anymore because all like I really only listen to music when I'm driving, and all the cars nowadays don't even have CD players in them. They just come with the 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 app connectivity and you do it all through youtube music or apple music or whatever so i don't even buy cds anymore uh my dad had how that collection looks for movies that's what my dad has when it comes to cds and albums he's the music version of me uh but yeah it's pretty much just movies for me i don't have the room or the money or the negotiating power with my wife to have other things to collect to that degree 
Resident Evil should be a TV series, like eight to ten episodes per season. Season one, The Mansion Incident. Season two, City and Ruin. Season three, Lost in Illuminatus, and so on. I wholeheartedly agree. I think eight to ten might be a push. Um, there's not nearly as much to focus on, especially like you think the mansion, uh, 10 episodes inside the mansion, or at least nine of them, probably one of them would be set up. Uh, I think six to eight episodes, you know, not, not that it matters, but you know, six to eight episodes, an hour each. I think that would be perfect to tell those stories. Maybe in things like Resident Evil Ford, you could expand that, but specifically the first season and the second season, I think they could get a little tighter, but yes, I agree. Should be a, a TV series. Uh, oh, shit. Hang on. There we go. Almost deleted Tony's one. I saw Expendables 4 two days ago. While definitely not a good movie at all, but I won't de won't deny the fact that I did have fun with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't hate it. It wasn't the miserable experience that some people had with it, but it's definitely bad. Um, it's a watchable bad, though. Like you can have if you have decent enough action with characters that I like, I, I can still get some mileage out of it. So, yes, it's a terrible movie on every technical front. It's a terrible movie, but I had enough fun with it. So I agree. All right. Now, let's see. I'm going to try to focus on some of the regular questions here for a little bit. Um, you have two super chat questions. Um, uh Oh. Did I miss something or was you just responding to somebody else? I think I got all of them. Maybe I'm misreading the comment. Anyway, I, I'm pretty sure I got all of them. Uh, have I seen Better Watch Out? It's like a black horror comedy version of Home Alone. I did. I saw it the year that it came out. I thought it was nice. It, it, it's got a really interesting. I don't want to say too much about it, but if you like Christmas horror movies, Yes, it's kind of like a horror comedy version of Home Alone, but they really subvert your expectations in that movie. So I, I had a good time with it. Check it out. Oh, let's see here. They actually did a Resident Evil series, but not based on the games. They did the Netflix series, which was like an alternate future that was loosely tied to the games. And I had a decent enough time with it. I did. I was one of the few people that did not absolutely eviscerate it when it came out, uh, especially the casting of Lance Reddick. Rest in peace. Uh, I thought he was awesome as Wesker. There was way too many people that were just like, he's black. He can't be Wesker. And I'm like, he's fucking awesome. He can be Wesker. You know, would he be my first choice? Probably not. But he was awesome. I love Lance Reddick. Uh, but yeah, they, they had nothing to do with the video games. And that was the problem. And that's what I said in the review. I was like, you do some good things here, but yet again, you're doing things that fans are not going to accept and do not want. Like we don't want whatever fan fiction version of Resident Evil you can think of, which is essentially what the entire Paul Thomas Anderson series was. All six movie was Paul Thomas Anderson, Resident Evil fan fiction starring his wife. And they're fun. They're guilty pleasures. But fans ever since the 2000s have been screaming from the fucking mountaintops just adapt the damn games and like i said they came close they came very close with welcome to raccoon city but they fucked themselves by doing two stories at once other than that they were on the right track but yes you are correct you are correct oh what are your thoughts on Corey taylor's new cmf two album as well as your favorite songs much like yourself i'm a Corey taylor fanatic midnight and dead flies are my favorites yes i love Corey. um to be fair i have not listened to it enough to be able to tell you my favorite songs i do prefer it to the first solo album the first solo album was a little bit too experimental for me he went in a lot of different directions which is what you should do with a solo album that's really the only point to do a solo album is to do things that you can't do in the bands that you're already in and between Slipknot and Stone Sour, which has been, you know, on hiatus for fucking ever at this point, there really was a big, wide variety of music that Corey could always do. And so it really until Stone Sour went on the shelf, uh, then he had a motivation to do something like the solo stuff. But yeah, CMF2 is more my style of music where the first one was a bit more experimental i really like the song uh is it beyond the one that was kind of the single i really like that one but i haven't listened to the album enough i've been still kind of stuck on stain's new album but uh yes i do prefer it uh 
what did I think of the final season of Barry? I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I think in a lot of ways, it was a very um, non-conventional, subverting your expectations direction to go that also felt very appropriate for the show. Like, it, it's not what I would have expected. It's not what I would have written as a final season. But even though they did that, when you get to the end of it, you're like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess that's that's how the show would have wrapped up. Uh, but it's my least favorite of the four seasons for sure. I think that there was some really good stuff in there, but I felt it was paced out very odd. Uh, Barry being in prison for most of it, I felt like it was, you know, in season three, they started to really lose sight of the comedy side of the show and just dived a lot more into the dark side of it. And season four kind of kept going with that. So where I didn't feel like you could have very much fun with the show, which is what I loved about the first two seasons, specifically season two. That's my favorite. But yeah, him being in prison for half the season, uh, and then all of a sudden they do that really awkward time jump to where I kept feeling like this was a dream sequence or something. And it just it never got confirmed as being that. But there was still very dreamlike stuff where the house is shaking and shit. Um, the direction that they end on. I don't want to dive into spoilers in case people have not uh, seen the, the finale or anything. But let's just say certain characters fates felt undeserved to where it's like. I know this is a dark comedy. This is a black comedy. So things aren't supposed to be all bright and shiny and, and wrap up with a nice, neat bow. But did that character really deserve that? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I didn't love it. Didn't hate it. He only sees super chat. OK, yeah, now I'm back. Well, this is what I do, guys. So I can't. Um, I don't think I can screen share what's going on, but in my chat on Streamyard, it's split into two categories they have live and they have starred and starred is anything that i star to 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 save for later and super chats i have set to automatically star and when i have 20 plus of them i just look at the starred chat so i try to get through the super chats and then i come back to the live chat because otherwise and anybody that's been to these q a's on my channel before if i go away from the super chats for too long there's been times where I've been an hour behind and I'm answering questions from, you know, 4 p.m. and it's 530. So just to keep the chat flowing and not have it build up too much and have a four hour stream, I have to do that. Not that you were complaining, Sean. I'm sure you were probably just guiding people that, that were probably asking questions. Have you watched the Slasher series? If so, what are your thoughts? I only saw season two, the one that was in like the mountains. Uh, like a snow resort or whatever. I thought the kills were pretty gnarly. It was pretty gory. I can't remember much else about it, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, can't say too much about it, unfortunately. Sorry. Oh, let's see here. Do you still like the Chucky series? Um, it's, it's a very complicated question. I really liked season one. Season one, I I was as skeptical as anybody could be about Chucky having a TV series. I expected to hate it, and I ended up really enjoying it. I didn't like the way that the season one wrapped up. There were elements of season one I didn't care for, but overall, I was happy with it. Uh, season two, I all but hated. There were elements of it that I enjoyed here and there, but pretty much every episode, I was like, ugh. And... I've been very much on this roller coaster ride with the Chucky franchise ever since Seed of Chucky, ever since Don Mancini took it over. Uh, him having full creative control, he has some things that he does that I love, and then he has some things that he does that I just don't care for whatsoever. There's very little in the middle. So we've had this little roller coaster ride where we have Seed of Chucky that I hated, we had Curse that I loved, we had Cult that I really didn't like, we had Season 1 that I did like, we had Season 2 that I hated, and so it's always like one for me, one for them. Uh, and I'm just kind of exhausted with that. And especially season two, which is how batshit weird it was. And now Chucky can be ripped. And now Chucky can, you know, it, they had the good Chucky. We had ripped Chucky. We had, you know, um, Apocalypse Now Chucky. And it just, Chucky can possess people through the air now, like an exorcist movie. And just so many things that they do now, just the fucking rule book is just, just torn in half and thrown in the fire. And I just, I really miss 
the simplicity of the early days in child's play. You know, I, I love those first four movies and those will always be my favorites. And I really like Curse because Curse gets back to a lot of that. The weirder this franchise gets, the less that I enjoy it. Uh, now, season three has not been that so far, but I'm still just kind of burnt from season two to where I'm kind of just watching the Chucky series out of obligation at this point. Uh, I thought the first four episodes were fine. There wasn't anything really all that awesome or stand out about it, in my opinion. There wasn't really anything that that completely turned me off aside from what they do with Jennifer Tilly. But um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. They they just kind of lost me right now. You know, Not to say that they can't get me back. Maybe this break between part one and part two is what I'll need, but it was just okay. You know, the first four episodes, there was that episode I actually was, I, 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 I forgot that it was even on that night and I did my reaction the next day. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. Chucky is a thing. So yeah, I don't know. It just, the, the stories that Don Mancini is telling and the things that he wants to explore and the, the, the tone and the direction that he wants to take it in are just not really for me. And, and that's fine. It's his series. It's not mine. You know, I'm not, I'm not self-centered enough to think that the Chucky series should always be for me. And if it's not, it can go fuck itself. You know, there's a lot of people that love what he's doing with it right now. Uh, and, and what he did in season one, I was part of that, but I don't know. It's just, uh, for a series that I love so much, it's just, it's, it's a bit, uh, it's like an emotional roller coaster that I'm kind of just exhausted with where I'm just like, whatever, well, what, what weird thing are they doing now? Oh, Chucky's eight feet tall. Of course he is. You know, it's when you have no rules, it's hard for me to invest because you can, just do anything with no explanation and I'm supposed to buy it. Uh, now I'm depressed. <laughs> Thoughts on Beetlejuice 2 trailer. Did they drop it? Hang on. Hold the phone. I don't see anything. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll be interested to check it out when it drops. But, uh, you know, Beetlejuice is one of like maybe three Tim Burton movies that I actually really like. So I am I would be very curious on Beetle, Beetlejuice, too. But uh, yeah, no thoughts till I see it, I guess. Are you a fan of the Silent Hill franchise? I am not nearly as much as Resident Evil. Um, I actually really wish that uh, Konami would do what Capcom is doing and start to remake their Silent Hill game, starting with the first one. They're doing it to the second game, of course, because it's the most popular one. But I really want a remake of the first one because I haven't been able to play the first one in, in like 20 years. But uh, yeah, the first Silent Hill was my introduction to survival horror, where most people talk about Resident Evil, the first one and how it just blew their mind. That was Silent Hill for me. So I loved that original game. Uh, I actually missed two and three for some weird reason that I can never explain. Uh, I've since played two on PlayStation now, but it's very different playing it in it was like 2020 when I played it versus when it came out. Um, and I've played a few of the other ones. I played the fourth one that was in the room. Uh, I played a couple of the American ones that weren't very good. Uh, I was really excited for PT. Everybody was. And as far as the movie, I, I never saw the second movie that everybody said was trash, but the first movie is one of the better video game movies. And I'm curious what this guy's going to do with his sequel coming out next year. So, yes, I am a fan. Well said, Cody. Friday is my favorite, though. I acknowledge it's not for everyone. However, my idea of low hanging fruit slashers is sleepaway camp. Well, I would agree, but I would put Friday in that same category. To me, where Sleepaway Camp um, differs from Friday is that Sleepaway Camp very much leans into that. Sleepaway Camp is, is like this weird mix of accidentally and purposefully terrible uh, that just has this weird charm to it. But yes, I agree. I would put those both in the same category. We've heard many funny stories about you and Papa Leach throughout the years. Can you tell us a really funny story you haven't told yet? Um, well, shit. We got a bunch of funny ones. Most of the funniest stories that we always talk about is like just him busting me doing something or uh, or us fucking with my little brother. Um, so my dad always had this sixth sense and I have it as well with my kids where you just know that they're doing something or you know that they've done. So you can just look in their eyes and be like, what the fuck did you do? Uh, so one of his big rules was always don't eat in the living room, you know, eat in the kitchen. 
and I have that rule as well. <laughs> so you grow up, you understand. But uh, you know, when you're young, you're a teenager. Oh, fuck you, you're in bed. I, I, I ain't eating the damn kitchen. I'm eat right here. And so one night it was like midnight or something, and I had like a fucking sandwich, and I was in the living room and I was eating it. And all of a sudden, I heard him come down the hall, and I said, "Oh shit!" And I picked up the pillow on the couch and I put the sandwich there and did that. And I was just hanging out watching TV. And he comes out, and you know, he's like, "Hey, what's up? What are you watching?" And he he hangs out with me for a couple of minutes, and we're BSing. And, uh, you know, he doesn't come out like suspicious. He just like came out and was like, Oh, Hey, what's up? And then, uh, he was like, all right, love you. Good night. And then he turned around and he stopped and he looked down and he picked the pillow up. And I was like, and it was so fucking funny. I couldn't even get mad or scared or like go into defense mode. I was just like, of course you fucking lifted the pillow for no fucking reason. And he just looks at me and we both laughed. Like it wasn't like a, an ass whooping moment where it normally would have if it wasn't so funny but uh that was that was one of his like six sense moments where there was just absolutely no reason to pick up that pillow but for some reason he had that that dad radar like doo -doo 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 sandwich and uh i had the same thing happen with him when i was in my first apartment i had my my movie collection was about a quarter the size of what it is now but uh i had bought a blu-ray of payback the movie with mel gibson and the American release of Payback, at least for the longest time, they may have changed it since, only had the director's cut, which I do not like because I bought it because I love Payback. And I didn't realize it is a wildly different movie. The tone of it is different. The music is different. It's much more film noir and not so much uh, uh, action and, and some of the comedies taken out of it. The ending is completely different. Like Chris Christopherson and everything is completely removed from the director's cut. It's just a chick on the phone. If you love payback, it, it's a very interesting, different cut. But that's the only cut that's on that Blu-ray. And so I bought it and I was like, what the fuck, man? And uh, my or maybe my dad bought it. One or the other. I think my dad might have bought it. He bought it and we watched it. And we're like, what the fuck is this? And so later on, I found a import payback that had the theatrical cut and the director's cut on it and i had that in my collection and sometime just before i moved out to be a shithead he swapped the discs so he took the one that i bought and put it in his case and swapped them and this was like maybe two or three weeks after i had moved into this apartment everything was set up and i was literally walking out the door to go to work and i when i walked towards my door my movie collection was on my right side and so i got my jacket on i'm walking and all of a sudden i stopped and I look and I go over to my shelf and I pull payback out and it's among like 500 other Blu-rays. I had a lot, not nearly as much as I did now, but I had a lot. And so I just pick payback up. I open it up. Motherfucker. And I called him and busted him out. And it was just a sixth sense. There was no nothing that told me that. So I don't know. We got like a mind meld thing going on with that. Uh, but that's the story that came to my mind right now. I got dozens of others shit hundreds of others but oh man expectations for kingdom of the planet of the apes i don't think it's going to be on the level of dawn or war but it still looks great i don't expect it to be either but i don't want to go in with low expectations i hope it's just as good as rise because i thought rise was incredible and i was like shit the sequels can't top this but as long as it's almost as good and then Dawn was significantly better. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to walk in expecting it to be as good as Dawn because Dawn is in my my top 20 movies of all time. But uh, as long as it's as good as Rise, I'll be happy. The time jump was jarring. OK, and that's how far back I am. They're still hearing me talk about. Uh, old Barry, you are the number one dude in the world. I just like to, <laughs> I just like to hang out and have a beer with. I recommend you watch the Danish horror movie. See no evil. I have seen it. Um, the one that came out last year, I believe, uh, they're remaking it with, uh, shit, McAvoy, James McAvoy. Uh, it's a well done movie, but it's one of those movies that it, it mm, I can't say too much. I have one emotional trigger when it comes to movies that the way that it's done can absolutely destroy a movie for me. And this movie did it. Uh, and it's a movie that explores like people in a really bad situation that have red flags galore. But for whatever reason, they just won't leave. And I was just infuriated the whole movie. I'm like, just get the fuck out. What are you doing? Leave. And uh, yeah, that was 
That was not a movie that I would say I enjoyed, though it is it is well done. It seems every possession movie in the same is the same old, same old, nothing new. Would what you like to see in a possession exorcist movie? Uh, well, watch When Evil Lurks because that's a very different possession movie. I would even say Talk to Me. Talk to Me, I would still consider a possession movie that's very different. So watch those two. And that's along the lines of things that I would like to see more of. Just something very, very different. Have any of your opinions changed on the Alien prequels or any of the Alien films for that matter since it's been a few years? No. <laughs> no. Still exactly the same. I love Aliens. I really like Alien. Um, I actually really like Alien Resurrection, too. I know it has its problems, but I've always had fun with that one. Some of it's nostalgia, but genuinely, I think that's a fun movie, despite its flaws. Uh, Alien vs. Predator, I have fun with. Alien 3 can kiss my ass. Alien Predator Requiem is a terrible movie. Prometheus is a, and Alien Covenant are very well-made movies, but Prometheus is... It's not an alien movie. Like it, it, you could You could very clearly tell that Ridley Scott wanted to do something else and just kind of compromised and made it alien. He wanted to do something else about AI and creation and, you know, the creator and, and all that's really interesting and profound, but it's not for me. Alien Covenant tries to be both even more so. And so you end up with this very weird mix to where it's like an alien sequel that's just superficially alien stuff and then uh, more Prometheus stuff. So, no, I mean, granted, I would have liked to have seen them completed the trilogy. I would have liked to have seen the end of that story, um, but they're not really for me. Uh, I would have much preferred Neil Blomkamp getting to do the Aliens legacy sequel than getting those two movies. All right, let's see here. Sorry, give me a second. I'm going to make sure I'm caught up on Super Chats. we got two more. Derek, what do you feel the most overlooked horror movie of all time? I think it's Idle Hands, the greatest horror comedy of all time and top five horror movie in general. Um, Most overlooked? Session 9 would be on that list for me. Frailty would be on that list for me. Uh, Idle Hands feels pretty popular. I wouldn't say that's overlooked, especially if you were my age and you grew up in that era. Uh, Idle Hands is pretty well regarded. Um, Trick or Treat, the 1986 heavy metal horror movie, I think is pretty overlooked. It's it's a cult movie that's got like a, a deep cut fandom, but it's not really talked about that much. Uh, any of those three, I'm sure there's some more if I wanted to keep going, but yeah, I would completely agree with Idle Hands. I agree that it's awesome. I love it, but people tend to know that one in my in my circles. Just had my first kid seven weeks ago. Beautiful baby girl. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, and a daughter is definitely, um, you know, it, it's funny. Whenever my wife was pregnant, everybody wanted a boy. Everybody kept voting for a boy. And most men tend to root for a boy. They want somebody to throw catch with in the back and watch football games with or do whatever. Uh, I actually wanted a daughter. I, I, I was kind of quiet about it, but I, I wanted a daughter. I got my way. And, um, there's a saying that I heard somebody say, every father wants a son, but every father needs a daughter. And it's very much true. So um, when you have a daughter and you're a, you're a daddy, you have a best friend for life right there. Uh, any tips on balancing YouTube job being a dad? Thanks for the great videos. Um, I will be the first to admit that I am not the best person to take advice from for that because I feel like I constantly struggle with that. And as a dad, you never feel like you get the balance right, no matter what you do. Um, but the tips are, if at all possible, try to spend as much time with your kids while they're up and while they're home as you can. Uh, obviously, you can't spend every waking moment with them, but I, I sometimes like to try to get my work done at the hours that they're not home, like either during the day when they're at school or at night after they're asleep. Uh, more so the second one for me, I'm more of a night owl, but that way I'm not always at work. Um, that's, that's the easiest thing I could say is just try to have a schedule to where, and, and if you have a regular nine to five job or a, you know, a regular 
type of situation where you're not working from home and you're gone, try to make the weekends or whatever days off you have um, focused on spending time with them, whether it's just hanging out and watching something on TV or going outside or going somewhere, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out as you go along. Uh, and every kid has their own level of exhaustion. You know, some kids are very easy. Some kids will wear you out, but um, that's the easiest thing. It's just try to try to time out your day to where your kids being home, wanting your attention does not always clash with your, your work. Hey, Cody, I know you're super busy, but if you had a chance to review a TV show from the 2000s, what would you review? The Shield, Sons of Anarchy, Justified. I would probably want to do The Shield. Um, I don't think that review series would do very well, which is why I haven't done anything like that. But if I had to pick one of them, I would like to do The Shield. The Shield is an awesome show that not enough people talk about. Bank of America heist question two. Who will be the muscle of the group? Indiana Jones, John McClain, Rambo, Rocky, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, out of those, I guess I would pick Rambo because he would kick the most ass. I mean, John McClane's my favorite on that list, but Rambo is Rambo. So, uh, yeah, we'll go with Rambo. Rambo and Hans Gruber. All right, come on now. Where is... There it is. Okay. Uh, have you heard of a movie called Man's Best Friend? The one with the robot dog? The one that's in Friday? Get your ass, Mr. Postman! Yes, I saw it when I was a kid a couple of times. I don't remember much about it, though. I used to remember I always wanted to rent the VHS at this video store. There was a video store that was attached to a grocery store in uh, Lambertville, Michigan, which is right next to where I lived in Toledo, Ohio as a kid. And my grandma used to shop there all the time. And it used to throw me the fuck off because all of the video stores I would go to with my dad, they would have the VHS tape and they would have the plastic clamshell with the actual tape behind it. And if there was nothing behind it, you knew it was sold out. Well, this video store did it differently to where you would it would only have the VHS empty box and you would have to bring it to the counter to get the movie. And if the VHS box wasn't there, then that's how you knew that it wasn't sold out. So I used to like for months, I would walk into this place wanting to get something. And I'm like, this place is always sold out. This place sucks. They never have anything. And then finally, I was in there and I saw somebody take the box up to the front and get it. And I was like, mind blown. But I remember one of the movies I wanted to rent the most was man's best friend mm. let's see here you've pretty much given up on mcu shows but are you going to watch echo because of kingpin i still haven't watched the trailer i just don't care i just don't care about the disney plus shows anymore maybe i don't know kingpin isn't enough to sell me but I just don't give a shit. Like, I, I don't need that much MCU in my life, for one, whether it was good or not. Like, calm the fuck down on all the content. Number two, every single one of the Disney Plus shows that I have watched have let me down. And so, as a brand, I just don't give a shit. It's just like, whatever. I saw the Marvels knowing full well that there was, like, three other shows I should have watched. And I was like, not doing the homework for the Marvels. Sorry. So, I don't know. Will I watch it? possibly am i on the train currently no oh let's see here what do i think of gus fring as professor x there was an idea that was rumored for a little while there where it was john carlo esposito as professor x and denzel washington as magneto and my first thought was, fuck, yes, that sounds awesome. Uh, now, there is issues with that, more so with Magneto, because very much the the fabric of the character of Magneto is somebody that lived through the Holocaust. And that's what forms his opinion on the way that he looks at mutants versus humans. It is an integral piece to the character. And I have always said, Race swapping, gender swapping, stuff like that. For the most part, it doesn't bother me if you don't affect the the interworkings of the character, the important pieces of the character. And most times they don't. Sometimes they do. And as much as I love the surface value of that idea of Giancarlo versus uh, Denzel, 
Denzel can't be cast as a Holocaust survivor. So they would have to entirely change the character of Magneto. Now, could they give him something else to be that motivation, like slavery in America or something? Maybe. But I tend to err on the side of don't fundamentally change the character to fit casting. So as much as I love that idea, it wouldn't be my first choice. Uh, and to be honest with you, just as somebody that has to live on the internet to a certain extent, I don't even want to deal with the fucking woke outcry that it would be to recast two famously white characters as two black people. Um, but uh, yes, I've, I've, I like the idea. I don't necessarily think it's the direction that they should go. It would be wildly different, but uh, it does create a few issues. Found your channel recently. Really enjoy your content. Keep it up. Also, what do you think of As Above, So Below? I kind of dug it. Uh, well, I appreciate it, but I've never seen As Above, So Below. Uh, I believe I think that's a found footage movie. Maybe not. There was about five or six years there where every January and February it was a new found footage horror flick, and none of them really got all that well reviewed. I think As Above, So Below was one of them. So I've never seen it. Although I have heard a couple people say that's pretty good, though. So maybe I should check it out. Seems like CMFT is the new stone sour. I'll always miss the latter, but I like what he's doing. Uh, yeah, I, I can agree with that. It's kind of like him doing stone sour without stone sour, or, or at least without Josh Rand. All evidence posts uh, points to Josh Rand being the one member of that band that he does not want to work with. Uh, what do you think of those new Judas Priest songs? Another band I'm a fanatic of. I think they're fucking awesome. I think both of them are awesome. I'm very excited for that new album. Uh, what... What they have done here recently, um, I, I'm totally fucking blanking on the new guitarist name. Shit. Uh, I, m all my life, it was Glenn Tipton, KK Downing. So uh, the new guitarist who's been with them the last couple of albums, who is awesome. He just seems to have really brought this new youthful energy to the band. Firepower was one of their best albums ever. And this, based off of the two songs they've released so far, seems like it's going to be just as good. So yes, I, I'm a Judas Priest fanatic, and I love both the songs they've released. Rudy! Rudy. Where would Zack Snyder, you motherfucker, where would Zack Snyder's Justice League rank in your all-time greatest comic book films? Um, Not very high. I think it's very good, but I'm just not as enamored with it as, as some of you fans are. Um, Top comic book films of all time to me would be like uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, both of the first two X-Men films, Logan, Days of Future Past, Deadpool, um, the, the Batman, The Dark Knight, Batman Begins, um, Kick-Ass, Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Endgame, uh, Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy... I'm just rattling them off, but every single one of the movies I just named, I would put above Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, I love, love the fact that we got it. I think it's really interesting, but I don't know when I'll ever watch that movie again. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. Don't hate me. Rudy really likes that movie, if you guys don't know. <laughs> I think he has that. I think he has Zack Snyder's Justice League tattooed on his penis. Anson Meadows, have you ever written a horror script or contemplated it? If you did, what kind of subgenre would you prefer or do best with? Would love some content with your creativity in this way. I've thought about doing something like that where I write a script and just kind of do like a, a video reading it and going through it. Uh, you know, Pitch Wars was kind of along that lines, but it was more competitive. Um, have I written a full script? No, I've written like stories and and little short stories and and little plot ideas and stuff. But uh, if I was to sit down and write a movie, I would probably make a vampire movie. Uh, I've had an idea in my head for a while for a vampire movie that's kind of, uh, it's kind of a mix between like Sling Blade and The Last of Us to where uh, like the story I keep thinking of is like this, this kid in a suburban neighborhood who's got a really shitty home life. Like his, his stepdad's a fucking abusive prick and his mom just kind of, is is numb just kind of doesn't really stick up for him and he keeps almost like fright night he keeps feeling like something weird is going on in this house in his neighborhood and uh, eventually he 
discovers that this guy that lives in this house is actually a vampire but he has like a, a friendly relationship with him like i like I, I picture like a scene where he's broken into his house to like find evidence of what's going on and then gets caught but then you know he's not killed or anything it's not like fright night where all of a sudden it's oh shit it's my ass it's you know kind of like at pupil or something like that uh or you know brad renfro and uh and ian mckellen like one of those kind of relationships but healthier <laughs> And so this kid starts to have this buddy buddy relationship with this vampire and he's fascinated with it. But then the guy starts to become like this protective figure similar to how um, similar to like Sling Blade where he he knows this kid's got a, a bad situation at home or whatever. Like I haven't fully cooked the idea yet, but there's something interesting. I've, I've been just thinking of I just picture scenes sometimes when I'm driving and I zone out, I just picture these little ideas. And something like that to where, like, by the third act, the it would come down to this vampire having to save this kid from his stepdad. And I even think of, like, a scene to where, like, like, let me, all right, let me, let me try to pitch this scene here for, like, the third act. So everything I've just said is the most of the movie. But then you have something to where the stepdad realize it gets, it gets pissed off, similar to how, um, like again, I keep referencing Sling Blade, like similar to that, where he just hates the fact that this kid has a healthy relationship with somebody. And this vampire comes into the house to try to help this kid. And, you know, through a series of events, because the stepdad's a drunk or whatever, he ends up shooting the kid by mistake. So now the kid's down on the ground dying. The vampire just rips the dude limb from limb. I, I picture like a, uh, like an angle to where, it's the kid like on the ground, like almost like this. And you just see like in the background, you see the, in the background, the vampire just fucking tearing the, the stepdad apart. And he has to make this choice of, do I let this kid die or do I bite him and save him, but also damn him to the life that I have where you can't die. Uh, again, these these are just details. This is not a fully cooked idea, but I just I keep thinking of these little pieces of a story that you could you could build out, and you know I'll think of an idea that I like, and then I'll kind of scratch it out. Like I, I always thought it'd be cool. Like what what if you had a vampire that was a very religious person before he got bit, and then after he gets bit, he is now, uh, you know he's he's essentially what does he say? And from dust told on a lapdog of Satan. But he still wants to try to to be he still wants to try to follow God, even though he has to kill people to survive. Like, I think these really interesting ideas of like things that haven't been done before. So I don't know if that sounds appealing at all, but um, uh, just ideas like that. I have sometimes when I'm just kind of fucking around and I, I need to just sit down and, and write it one day and actually kind of cook these ideas out and figure out what fits and what doesn't but vampire movie i i always kind of have my brain going in like man that would be cool nobody's done that so i don't know i'm probably rambling at this point but uh yeah that's that's a vague idea of, a, of an idea for a movie that i've had in my head for like a year now that i need to just sit down and write uh i unironically think that dean kane played the best superman and clark kent and Lois and Clark was the best Superman adaptation to date. Thoughts? I never saw it. Uh, I remember very vividly Dean Cain playing Superman. And uh, um, I remember the show, but I never watched it. So I really can't comment on it. I never really became interested in Superman until Man of Steel. So I'm, I'm very behind the curve. If we, When we get Superman Legacy, I'm going to have to do a review series and finally watch all the Christopher Reeve movies and then get lambasted for not loving them. <laughs> Hello, fan from Estonia. Hey, from Estonia. Every time I hear that, I think of um, I think of Encino Man, <laughs> where they're they're telling the caveman's a, a a foreign exchange student, and they're like, "Where's he from?" And Paulie Shore's like, "I don't know, Estonia." The biggest surprise movie for this year was the horror movie Influencer, a film with enjoyable twists and very good music. Have you seen it? Don't watch the trailer. I have never even heard of it, actually. Is it similar to... Um, what was that? Was it Sprint? What the fuck was the name of that movie? Uh, shit. It's the movie with the kid from Stranger Things where he goes... Uh, Spree. I was thinking Spread. I'm like, that's a fucking porno movie. That's not what it... Spree. 
uh, from a couple years ago. That's what when you say influencer, that's what I think. But no, I've never even heard of it. So I'll have to check that out while also not watching the trailer. <laughs> so so hard to sell you on a movie when you say, don't watch the trailer. Are you still hoping for Child's Play 2019 sequel? What would be your idea for a sequel? And what are your thoughts on the movie Starship Troopers? Starship Troopers is awesome. Um, I don't like it quite as much as some of other Paul Verhoeven's top movies, but I do like it a lot. Uh, do I still have hope for it? No, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Uh, I think there's weird things with the rights to where they only had the rights to do one. They didn't have rights to do sequels in the first place. Plus, you got the TV series going on now, full steam ahead. So uh, if they got shit for doing the movie back when Chucky wasn't doing anything and they were just kind of cooking up the, the TV series, can you imagine what would happen now? So, no, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Uh, my idea for a sequel, I don't have anything specific, but obviously Chucky's full blown evil now. And um, he has some kind of a vendetta against Andy. So it'd be a very different movie. It would be more your traditional child's play where he's the bad guy the entire time. Um, but yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen a follow up because I did like that that remake. But no, I, I think that's dead in the water. Would you rather meet Arnold or Bruce Willis? Oh, man. I would love to meet both of them, but I'm going to say Arnold. I'm going to have to say Arnold. Arnold was my hero growing up. So uh, if I ever got the chance to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I would probably cry. <laughs> but I would love to meet Bruce Willis, too. Unfortunately, now it's in a time where apparently he's having a lot of communication issues, so it would probably break my heart. But um, yeah, I would have loved to meet either one of them. Would you rather get yelled at by Gordon Ramsay for cooking a bad meal or get yelled at by Terrence Fletcher for messing up a guitar riff? I don't know who Terrence Fletcher is. Why am I blanking on that? Um, I guess Gordon Ramsay. I don't remember. I'm not the best guitar player. Like I used to play a lot. I have, I'd never pick up my guitar anymore. So I would I would at least I'd rather try to do my skills for Gordon versus try to impress somebody with my very mediocre guitar skills. Bank of America Heist question three running theme here. <laughs> Once I get caught up with these guys, I'll probably head out. Um try to you know stop before two and a half hours just because it's already six and if i decide i want to go somewhere and and i have to figure out dinner but uh, nonetheless question three who will be your gun weapon men you can pick two john wick agent 47 black widow indiana jones uh john wick and agent 47 question four who will be your getaway driver dom toretto or mario dom toretto because his cars are invincible Worst overall slasher franchise, wrong turn. See my thoughts on 31 on 31, pain and suffering, as well as the debrief we just did. Excited for Stuckman's project, Shelby Oaks. Yes, I am. I was one of the financial backers. I talked with him very briefly about it at last year's Fantastic Fest. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised it wasn't released this year at this year's Fantastic Fest. That kind of seemed like that would have been a neat little full circle thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know when it's supposed to come out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see what it is. Tony Chappie. What is it about sometimes film critics bring political bias to some movies like death wish and Rambo last blood, just with them calling it a trumped Mexican nightmare, but they give Sicario a pass. Uh, some film critics and journalists don't know how to be professional and they don't know how to remove their biases from things. Uh, now, I mean, on one hand, when you're talking about movie criticism, there are so many things about who you are that colors your experience with a movie. Uh, like how I experience something is going to be different, how you experience it because our personality differences, our outlooks, what we value versus what we don't value, how we grew up, what movies we like, what movies we don't like so many different things. And sometimes pod politics can be a part of that, but um, more times than not, when you see like, like death wish, Death Wish didn't deserve any political commentary because the movie is not a politically charged movie whatsoever. It is a old school action thriller. And the only reason why everybody who did decide to talk about it that got political got political was because that was the big topic at the time. It was, you know, some shooting had happened when the movie came out or a couple of shootings had happened. And so it was like the big topic at the time about gun violence and we should have more gun laws and so because you had this movie that came out that became the punching bag but those people are unprofessional that's just that that's just how it is if you watch that movie 
and you got anything political out of it, then you walked in wanting to find something political about it. It's the same thing when you have people that walk into a movie and they just want it to be woke so they can say this shit was woke. And it just it happens all the fucking time. You've made up your mind before you've seen it. So the only time that bringing in political bias or political opinions into your movie review is relevant is if the movie asks for it or if the movie is discussing it or if the movie very clearly is playing into that then that is appropriate but uh the examples you just gave are not and we live in a time nowadays where a certain amount of people like to put politics in everything everything has to do with their politics what they eat what they sing what they fucking watch on tv where they go, who they hang out with, it all has to fit their political party. And that sounds like a miserable existence, so have fun with that. Solar Elysium, have you seen the trailer for Founders Day coming in 2024? Also, do you think it's time to reboot the Purge franchise? Uh, no and no. Um, I think the Purge franchise can do sequels and be just fine. I mean, you could set one at any point in the timeline and it's not going to matter. The, they just don't really have a, 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 a issue of trying to figure out how to fit in the canon at all uh for founders day no i, I i'm honestly reading the title i'm not even familiar with what movie that is so uh i have not seen the trailer for it if you went back in time what movie would you try to redeem freddy's dead or seed of chucky seed of chucky i mean freddy's dead didn't by then the, the the franchise was already kind of on a steep decline as it is so i think making freddy's dead better wouldn't have changed the outcome of much whereas if seed of chucky was at, on the level of bride of chucky i think that chucky the, as a franchise would be much healthier today and some would say it's in a very healthy place but you know um seed of chucky is what killed chucky for a lot of people for a very long time and uh Hey, Nikki, just joined, so I'm sorry if I missed this, but thoughts on how Scream will be affected by the recent cast news. Thanks for always creating great content. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I talked about it a little bit, but I'll reiterate. So thoughts on how Scream will be affected by the recent cast news. Uh, I, I really don't know because the direction that they're seemingly going now is a very obvious pivot where they're like, oh, you know, we're going to reboot creatively and we really would love to have Nev Campbell and we'll bring Patrick Dempsey back too. To me, it's like, well, no shit. You know, that that's where else would you go at this point? You're kind of between a rock and a hard place. So I think it's going to depend entirely on whether or not Nev Campbell accepts whatever they give her. Uh, and I would not be surprised whatsoever if she denies working with them because of how they did her in Scream 6 and how they are doing uh, Melissa Barrera right now. I mean, money talks. I would not falter whatsoever if she took the money um and you know you gotta pay the bills but at the same time i would not be surprised if she you know just decided no i just i don't like what you guys are doing i want to be a part of it uh if that happens then then it's going to get really weird and interesting because scream 5 was very much like a passing of the torch movie to these new characters and if we don't have these new characters uh, can you just do a scream 7 with an entirely new cast that have nothing to do with the, the two characters that just dropped out and Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox? I don't think so. I don't think anybody would even want that. So I think it's going to depend entirely on what Nev Campbell wants to do. And if she denies working with them, they might not even do another one. I really don't know. Favorite moment from the first Ted movie? Um, probably the fight scene where... Uh, where he's like, I should have got a Teddy Ruxpin, and they start fighting each other. Me and my dad were fucking rolling in the theater when he grabbed the 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 little uh, metal stick or whatever and pulls his pants down and starts spanking his ass. We were fucking crying. So yeah, the first Ted, that's the last movie I remember seeing in theaters that just died laughing. Highest question five, the comedian to distract the guards, Jim Carrey, Joker, Sean Chandler. <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, if he's distracting the guards, I'm guessing Joker would be the best. Uh, question final, who will be the leader? Arlie, Ermy, Woody, Darth Vader, Aragorn. Uh, Darth Vader, I guess. <laughs> Interesting questions, man. Very creative there. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right, let me see. 209. I'll go to 215. 
So two, two hours and 15 minutes, so about another six minutes, and then I'm going to take off for the night. I appreciate everybody being here, though. Uh, let's see here. Trying to go up a little bit. Okay, here we go. All right. Man, my mustache is tickling my nose, and it's killing me. I need to go trim it. You always get like one hair that curls up, and it just, just tickles the inside of your nose. Uh, no, 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 no. Whom would you like to be the lead in your vampire movie? Um, I don't know. I I wouldn't think that it would be somebody. It would have to be somebody young enough that it would make sense for this kid to be hanging out with him, like somebody in their early thirties at the oldest. I don't think you would do like an older man. You know, somebody who's in his thirties that would still be young enough to to be able to hang out with this kid and not have it be very odd. So I don't know. Again, I haven't really cooked that idea much. Are you and Haunted Hippie working together anytime soon? Uh, we don't have any plans to, but um, just neither of us have presented an idea to the other. You know, it's the end of the year, so now it's all like best of the year, worst of the year. Uh, I don't do too many live streams and stuff, so my channel, there's not as much room for collabs as, as some others anymore. Um, if, if she has anything coming down the pipe, I haven't been approached about it yet, so I'm sure we will. You know, I'm, I'm sure we will. Spread, LOL. Yep. Hmm. Thoughts, opinions on James Wan potentially directing an adaptation of Dead Space. While not my first choice, that will always go to John Carpenter. I'm mildly intrigued. Um, I would be interested in that. I think James Wan would have a... a I would like to see him do like a, a space monster type movie like that. That would be different enough to where I think you could use his strengths from things like Conjuring and Insidious, but he would have to do something very different with it. So I actually really like that idea. I know John Carpenter has said, like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that, just kind of throwing out ideas. I, I don't think we'll ever see John Carpenter direct another movie. And with all respect to John Carpenter, he's my favorite director. I don't think if he did come back, there's any reason to believe it would be very good anyway. His last number of movies were not very good. Uh, and so I just don't think what made him a really bold, unique, creative force back in the 70s and 80s, I don't think is still in him as a movie director you know he he he's had his time so while i would absolutely be morbidly curious if i was signing the check and i had john carpenter and james wan both in the running for this i would give it to james wan <clears throat> i think this was by design and we're just looking for a reason to fire melissa so they can get nev back I mean, we'll never know, but I mean, just would it really be that difficult to have a movie come out with all of them? They, I mean, if they were trying to give the, the movie made money, the last two made a lot of money. So it's not like it bombed. And everybody was like, fuck this shit, bring never. I'm never coming back. Like they made money. It was a successful movie and it was rated fairly well. So there's not like a motivation that they have to where it's like, oh, clearly whatever Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega are doing is just not working for anybody. We got to get Nev back. Um, I'm sure there are some people that would say that, but there, there, there wasn't anything in those last two movies that would necessitate doing that. And if they wanted to get Nev back into the lead, I don't see why they would have any difficulties still having both of them in the movie and paying them and just having the movie be that and having the best of both worlds. But I don't know. Like I said, with the details that we are given in these stories and the weird timing of them, we can speculate all day long about what's real and what's PR and what's conspiracy. And we may never know. All I can tell you is that if we're to believe these stories at face value, does Melissa Barrera deserve to have the, the role stripped away from her because of what she said? No, not for what I've seen that she said, unless there's something that she's deleted that I haven't seen yet. There's people that have done exponentially worse that had nothing happen to them. So that to me is just that that's as employers, 
They have the right to do whatever the fuck they want with their money. They could fire her with no reason whatsoever. And that's their prerogative. That's the beauty of freedom of speech. You can say whatever the fuck you want and people can react however the fuck they want. But in my own personal opinion, does she deserve it? No. But I don't sign the checks, so it doesn't matter. Oh, let's see here. Okay, I'll do a couple more. Terrence Fletcher is from Whiplash, by the way. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Now it all makes sense. If that's the case, then yes, I'll still take Gordon Ramsay because I don't want to fucking anything whipped at my head. Thoughts on Robert Rodriguez Escape from New York remake? Uh, is that something that's been rumored? Um, I'm intrigued by that idea. He wouldn't be my first pick. I'd like to see Lee Winnell do an Escape from New York remake. That would be my my hope. Chucky versus Megan, who wins? Chucky. Fuck Megan. <laughs> I like Megan, but come on. Come on. All right. One more. One more. Uh, let's see. If we ever get a Nightmare on Elm Street reboot, would you like... To... Oh, hang on. I'm sorry. What would I like the plot to be? I just wanted to be a, a... I wanted to take the approach of Dream Warriors, where you just start the movie. You don't have to explain where in the timeline it is. Just give me a good old-fashioned Nightmare on Elm Street story with awesome kills and dream sequences. You don't have to get too fancy with the storyline. I don't need a legacy sequel. I don't need Heather Langenkamp and Robert Englund to come back for one more. Um, uh, I clicked on that one by mistake, though. I was trying to get to this one. Uh, when do you think Maxine will be released, and do you think we will get a trailer soon? I would assume it would be released in the March-April time frame, maybe. Um, they haven't set a release date for it, so maybe it'll be summertime. I really don't know. I feel like a movie like that would be good to get out right before the summer blockbuster season. Uh, will we get a trailer soon? I would imagine so. I'm pretty sure it's shot, so I don't think that they're, they're, they were screwed by the strikes or anything, but I could be wrong. And the last question, do you think box office matters in today's world? John Campia swears by it, but I don't think it really matters anymore. In regards to what? Um... Does the box office matter in regards to what's a good movie and what's a bad movie? No, it never has. Uh, does the box office matter in regards to what movies get made? Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Now, there's exceptions. There's times where a movie can flop at the box office and they still follow it up because they have faith in the property or they had faith because there was so much, so many good reviews that they're willing to give it another chance. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, and does the box office matter? Like if a movie's absolutely just decimated by the critics and by by the audience members but it makes a billion dollars they're still going to make more i mean how many fucking transformers movies do we have right now but the box office absolutely matters because nowadays especially that's all the movie studio studios see is profit is return so they make decisions based off of what's going to make the most money now there's there are studios that are willing to do a little bit more experimenting. I mean, there's a reason why we still get Martin Scorsese releasing movies that are three and a half hours long that bomb, but are very well made because they're willing to take the loss to, to, to give us that. But um, for the most part, the way that it works is you have movies like the Marvel Cinematic Universe or summer blockbusters like... Um, you know, the Mission Impossible franchise or whatever movies that are going to make big money. They release those so that they can afford to fund all the smaller movies that are either going to make less profit or no profit. But yes, the box office absolutely matters. It always will. That's like saying, you know, just just pissing money into the wind doesn't matter. No, it matters if, if the if they're signing the checks and, and funding these productions and not getting a profit, they're not going to be. Uh, they're not going to be continuing on with that. The thing was a flop. There you go. Perfect example. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I hope everybody has a safe Black Friday. Take it from me, uh, although I might be a hypocrite because I don't know if I'm going to go out tonight or not. But take it from me. Do your shopping online because all the shit's on there online anyway. Uh, be sure to check out Ewin if you guys need a gaming chair or a computer chair. I'm telling you, I, I love this stuff. So the, the pinned comment has been there the entire stream. 
down in the video description below. If you're watching this on the replay, I have my my discount code Cody for 30% off of everything, uh, which is going to be even more than Black Friday's 20, 25% off sale they're doing right now. Um, click those links down below in the video description as well. I'm pretty sure that's what's tied to my engagement. So please use those links. Uh, there's one for the U.S. store. There's one for the Canadian store. And um, if you need a good computer and gaming chair, you're not going to be disappointed with this whatsoever. It's good stuff. I've been using this one for a year. I've been using their products in general for almost four years. And I have nothing negative to say whatsoever. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for all the super chats. And um, we will be back. Let's see. Next week's pretty much a free week. There's not really anything coming out that I know of. So I'm going to try to get back on board with the John Carpenter review series before we get into December. And I got to start watching as many movies as I can to, to get that, um, that final count for the ranking all of the movies, of 2023 list. I'm going to try to outdo the amount of movies that I watched last year, which I think was like 86 or something like that. So here we go. One more month, one more month. Everybody have a good night. And I will see you next time.